a couple of remarks. So let's um, open the session. Oh, where's I need to the chair? Um, the March um, 26th select board meeting is now in session and uh, may I have a motion to go in an executive session. So moved. Second. Oh, you have to read yeah, the executive. I have to read the actual oh. motion. Yes. Uh, moved the select board to go into executive session to discuss interest in real estate where the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the body and to reconvene an open session at approximately 7 p.m. Second. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Roll. Yes. Roll call. Oh, oh, roll right. call. Right. Yeah. Uh, John. Yes. Uh, Halsey. Yes. Alvarado. Yes. Friedman. Yes. All right. Let's put the move for Dan gets here.
Welcome everyone um, to the uh, what day is it today? Twenty sixth, uh, the March twenty sixth board of uh, select board meeting. Um, uh, we will start off this evening with um, uh, um, select board. I'm sorry. We're going to start off the evening with some proclamations. And then we have, uh, sorry. All right, so we're gonna start off with a proclamation for the Reading Scholarship Foundation. There'll be another proclamation after that. More of that in a minute. And following the proclamation, we will um, hear select board and town manager reports, um, <coughs> followed by public comment. Uh, and then, to, then after that, we have five public hearings, three of which are related to select board policies. One is based on recommendations from the Parking, Traffic, and Transportation Task Force, or PTTDF, um, and one is about a new telephone pole at Franklin Grove Street. Uh, so let's, we have a new process of uh, starting with proclamations, and um, tonight we, we are celebrating, or the Reading Scholarship Foundation is celebrating their 50, 50th anniversary. Um, over this period, they've awarded close to $4 million to over 5,000 students. So the board would like to express its gratitude to the RSF this evening. And for that, I will turn things over to Barry. So thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm actually really honored to be able to kind of give this because um, one of the first things I ever did when I moved to Reading, I, my friend Betty Davidson cornered me and said, hey, we have this really great organization. Would you like to join? And I did, and, and, and what a wonderful, what a wonderful, um, group that they are and the activities that they do. But I did want to, I know that there's a, there's, there's a number of members from the Scholarship Foundation that are here, and I think, um, is, is your president or vice president want to come up and just say a couple of words about kind of what you do? You have a captive audience here, um, and 50 years is a long time, and yes, the, you, the cake is kind of for you too, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. the cookies are for you. Yeah. Thank you all very much. We appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you, board, very much for your, uh, having us here for this proclamation. Um, I know I would all say my colleague, fellow board members that are here, uh, some have been here for a long time. Betty, as you mentioned, uh, 25 years, and Tom, I believe, as well, uh, past presidents and. and why don't you Burke. introduce everybody by name? That would be great. Well, we have to get names. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to stand up. I, 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 we're a great group of people. We have a great time together. Uh, Scholarship Foundation has been around for 50 years. I've been involved for about three or four years. Um, as my daughter was going through the Reading High School program, I went to a financial aid meeting and they wrote me. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you advance very quickly there. So I've become vice president this year. I'm accepting this on behalf of uh, Bob Beckman is our president that can't be with us tonight, but I'm accepting it on behalf of him and the Scholarship Foundation, and so I want to thank all of you very much. Um, so we do a great, great number of things. As you had mentioned, in this past year, 19, uh, 2018, we gave away 182,000, over $182,000 to 143 students, well-deserving students. Uh, founded in 1969, since 1970, the Scholarship Foundation has awarded close to $3 million $900,000 to over 5,000 students. So very impactful organization. <clears throat> we couldn't do it without the support that we received from the town, uh, from many of the local businesses and organizations that are uh, helpful to us and support us, and obviously to the town members and uh, residents of the town who support us individually, and we really appreciate it. And there's a number of ways to get involved. We do have fundraisers. Uh, we just had a successful one at Bertucci's. We have two more coming up on May 3rd. We'll be having a wine tasting at Capo Moose down on Hayden Street. Uh, it's a $5 request to come in the door. You can sample some wine, and it helps to support the cause that uh, we're working for to help kids with scholarships. We also have on June 6th, we'll be down at the Mandarin having a dine and donate down there. And so we appreciate that type of support as well. It really goes a long way. Um, 
we have a great time putting this stuff together. It's not a big commitment. We also have opportunities for other board members. Uh, we're a great group of people. We have a lot of fun. We get together every year and make sus efforts for a wrap up. And it's a party. So uh, we encourage more people to come out. It's a great time. Not a big commitment. And it really makes a big impact for uh, high school students. The, the awards are given out um, in May. This year it will be May uh, 9th. Yeah, 29th. And uh, applications are in for this year. But you can find out more about the Scholarship Foundation. It's IRS, IRSF. Reading yeah. uh, Reading SF.org. Reading Scholarship <laughs> Foundation. There's opportunities you can find out how to apply for a loan if it's uh, looking for a uh, grant for uh, high school students, college students, up to the end the year. And the more information about um, the Scholarship Foundation and what we do. So, uh, again, we, we appreciate the opportunity to be here. We appreciate the proclamation and thank you again to the town and everybody that supports us. I hope that. Uh, you can join us at some time at some of our fundraising events, and you can look at the board member to help us out. So, thank Great. you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't go away. Don't go away. Don't go away. Oh, Don't go away. Got him. So, okay. move the... Yeah, yes. Um, you got to read it. Yeah. Do you want to read it? No, I'm not read, read no, it. He reads it. it. Uh, move yeah, that the yeah. board present the Reading Scholarship Foundation a certificate of recognition. Okay, so this uh, certificate is hereby awarded to the Reading Scholarship Foundation. Congratulations to the Reading Scholarship Foundation on its 50th anniversary. RSF was founded in 1969 by a group of businesses and community leaders to provide need-based scholarships to Reading Secondary School se students seeking a college education. A completely volunteer effort, the foundation has raised funds from individuals, organizations, and businesses, and has helped establish dozens of memorial funds. Since its inception and through this year, Reading Scholarship Foundation has assisted over 5,500 local students and awarded over $4 million. We thank you for your extraordinary efforts to support Reading Scholars, given this 25th day of March 2019 by the Reading Select Board. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Barry. Um, before moving on in the meeting, uh, the board needs to address a very serious issue. Um, Mr. Halsey. Yes. Do you have anything to say for yourself? I do. Okay. I'm ready to confess. Huh? <laughs> We've been waiting all this time. Uh, thanks, Andy. Andy's given me the opportunity to um, talk to us together and to you, those of you that are here and anybody else in TV land that might be listening, which seems to be a bigger crowd all the time, um, uh, about my good friend and our valued associate, Dan Ensminger, who is this evening enjoying his last meeting. Well, I never say last. Kronk might be back, right? <laughs> 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 uh, Dan is, uh, is enjoying the last meeting of this term, shall we say, and has not at the moment decided to run for re-election. So, um, so we're going to retire him in case he <laughs> thinks twice of it. Um, I do want to just on a personal note say that um, when I had uh, thoughts that this was a this was something I would like to do uh, probably seven or eight years ago is when I got acquainted with Dan uh, it was suggested that I should get acquainted with Dan because he was kind of the um, the Grand Master of um, the selectman at the time he was back for a second round I don't know what that speaks to, Dan, but you, you know you got to think twice about that. I'm still that scratching one. my head. Yeah, I know that you are. I know that you are. Here's what I here's what I know. Before I talk to all of us a little bit about Dan's timeless service to this to this town of Reading, um, when I had the opportunity to visit with Dan a little bit about town government. Um, first thing I realized, and I will point out that you always have to respect your elders, and Dan is a year <laughs> older than me, uh, so, uh, so I, I did defer to his age. Um, I learned that Dan understands that working as a volunteer, um, particularly as you try to move forward the town that you live in and love, um, it is not a checker game, it's a chess game. Um, and Dan has, you know, 
done his best to slow me down a little bit from time to time to remind me that it is a that it is a chess game that has to be thought about um, with the end in mind. Uh, and Dan has been very, very good at that, and he's been good at it for many years, spanning four decades, actually. Um, Dan started, um, it, well, it hasn't been 40 years, it's only been 38, but it's in four decades, so we'll, we're going to give it a count there anyway. You know, um, Dan has been involved in some very interesting things in his career. Um, in 1981 is when he actually raised his hand and said, yes, I'm prepared to serve as a volunteer. And he served in a very interesting commission. It was a ad hoc commission, the Industrial Development Commission. And what did they do? Well, they could have done many things, but what they did was figure out that we had this piece of land that needed attention. Um, and it needed attention not necessarily because we wanted to give it attention, but the federal government said, you've got to do something with that land. Um, and so Dan was involved in the Industrial Development Commission, which studied the landfill, which figured out um, how to engineer and engage the whole Walker's Brook um, process going forward. And that's how far back Dan's service goes. And when you stop to think about his instrumental involvement in that, and what that has meant to all of us as citizens and taxpayers, the effect is is, is huge. Um, it started a long time ago. And you know, I think that service probably prompted him to his election to the town meeting in 1985. I get it, Bill, he's not been around as long as you. <laughs> but 1985, is when Dan started his service to the town as a town meeting member, looking after the affairs of the town. And there's not very many people that you know have served in that capacity over that span of time. You know, he was kind of innovative in a lot of firsts. Um, one of the things that we did in the mid 80s was we created this thing called you know Community Planning and Development Commission, uh, CPDC. Um, Dan was a charter member of the CPDC. Uh, you really are old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is supposed to be nice. Uh, well, it's, it's nice, but you can't. Well, you can't yeah, give. I mean, you got to give it to him a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> you respect know, your elders a little bit. Uh, yeah, come on. I will tell you the other fun. thing that that prompted him to do. I think uh, he's realized that he should have a grander role, and uh, he was elected to the board of selectmen in 1989 and served for nine years during that period of time. Um, he served with some very interesting people. There's a, this thing that, the, that was given to you is with some photographs of, this is kind of an original idea. Hold that up. Uh, you gotta hold that up. Oh. Fabulous idea. Yep. Uh, the, the cards, the messages, and the, the photograph of. This is really great. This is a oversized card signed by many, many people at Town Hall. And I've always, said before town meeting to everyone else we have the finest municipal employees of any town uh, they're dedicated they do their job <coughs> this is the board around 1990 i think uh, uh, that's me a little more hair suit um, <laughs> it was less suit uh, more hair and it was a different that's right color. i still have the suit probably <laughs> this is uh, gene nigro who uh, was a sitting member at the time kathy quimby our uh, then town clerk George Hines, with whom I served for, I think, six years. Pete Heckenblechner, uh, he'd been on the job probably for three years at that, three, four years at that point. Sally Hoyt, love Sally, she's still around, doing great. And Bill Burdett, who I believe was on the board when I came in. And uh, then this guy uh, came. Yeah, there's a little bit of a comparison there. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, those. that was kind of Dan's a rookie card, if you will. Uh, that was early in his career. He went on to serve with uh, people like Russ Graham, um, Camille Anthony, um, who we just recently honored, you know, upon her passing. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing is that that service was continuous and laborious for nine years. Um, decided that it was time to move off that board, and one would think um, the the usual move is you step back and kind of oh maybe you'll be on town meeting but you kind of you know sit back a little bit that wasn't the case with dan at all um in 2002 um he was again 
on a on an ad, ad hoc committee, the RMLD Governance Study Commission, and he was the chair of that. Uh, it was time to look at our public utility, understand how they were governed, um, and make recommendations to move forward. Um, at the completion of that committee, Dan raised his hand, uh, stepped up willing to be uh, a commissioner on the light board for a term uh, to help see that governance through. This is kind of, this is that timeless service that you see rarely in a person who says, I'm just gonna, you know, what do you need me for? Is kind of what, you know, Dan's motto has been for many, many years. Um, you know, when he finished his term on the light board, he was busy in town meeting, and then he saw what he thought was a need, and I think he was right. We had a changing of the guard of, you know, the, the, the Board of Selectmen at that time, as it was called, uh, was changing uh, personnel. Um, Bob was stepping up as the, as the new manager, a manager of uh, 26, 27 years was stepping away. And Dan felt civically obligated to raise his hand and say, you know what, maybe I can be a bit of a bridge. You know, as the as the board gets established with some new people, and as Bob gets settled into his new role, even though he wasn't a stranger to town hall, and I thought that that you know, that's about the time that Dan and I met, um, and I recognized what he was doing, and I and it was inspiring to me. Uh, it made me feel like I should join the party, um, and so for that I thank you, Dan. I mean, during the time that Dan has been a selectman here over the last six years there's been some we've there's been many things done and accomplished but things that some things that Dan was very specifically involved with um, was senior tax relief you know he and I spent countless hours trying to figure out the math and the right way to do it and then bring it back to our fellow board members and you know the back and forth um, but he was very involved in that um, he along with the rest of the board saw a need around the rezoning of uh, the, of a new district for 40R, which we're starting to see bear fruit. Um, you know, his work with other volunteers has been really important. Dan has been interactively involved with VASC at one level or another. Um, VASC is the, is the two-person select board member committee that actually interviews and helps people, you know, make their move into their own volunteer service. And um, he, along with Barry recently, uh, you know, I thought came up with a really great idea about how we should staff the VASC and terms that we're going to be doing. I know Vanessa's involved in that as well. But, you know, one of the things, whenever there's, if you, you see a theme here, whenever something new needs to go on, um, Dan will take out that PhD, dust it off. We don't call him Dr. Dan. I call him a lot of things, but it's not that. Um, but, you know, he, he brings the innovation. He's not afraid ever to take on a new task and figure out the right way to do it, give us all guidance, and it's been enormously helpful in that regard. You know, tonight we're going to see the fruits of his work with uh, with our ch current chairman um, as we try to restructure some policies that, frankly, most of this stuff hasn't been looked at in 25 years. It makes your hair hurt when you look at it. Um, but we insisted, once Dan made the um, uh, announcement that he was not going to that he was not going to seek re-election. Um, I think the chairman wisely <coughs> enlisted him um, to work on these policies. And frankly, um, we've been all beating him like a rented mule here to get it done before he leaves. So here we are at the last moment, and we're going to get it done, Dan, if we can, yeah. out of respect for the hard work you've done along with Andy and getting those things done. You know, that's kind of the whole service aspect of this. But then there's this... There's this other thing, you know? I mean, there's this guy that um, is a lector at St. Agnes who works on the finance committee of his church. I know that Dan is a regular visitor to those that are ill and need communion, whether it's at the hospital or anywhere. Um, he steps up to do that. He stepped up to become a member of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. And in his spare time, He's the guy that makes sure that IT 
runs because even churches need you know an IT person now uh, particularly now he's uh, the, there's a collaboration of the two Catholic parishes in town and you know Dan's kind of the man behind the scenes on the IT to make sure that it comes together this is that timeless service that you know it's not just about town it's about a lot of things that go on and in the midst of that he actually had time to have a wife and children, <laughs> believe it or not. And grandchildren. And grandchildren. And, and he and Joan have done just a fabulous job of raising three boys, all very successful in their own right. Uh, I know one of them's on the West Coast, and I have one on the West Coast, yep. too, and I know that's challenging. But you'll find Dan on the road to New Jersey to visit those grandchildren and his son and his wife. And then uh, uh, on Wednesdays, stay away from him because... He's up in North Andover with the newest grandchild, uh, with the baby, he and Joan. Um, this is a life well lived. This guy stays busy all the time. There's no rocking chairs for him. Um, he, he may be stepping away from this part of his service, but um, I just, Dan, wanna, wanted to recognize and talk a little bit about all of the things that you have done and meant to this town and many other things that aren't so public you know in the way of your family and your church and your friends your friends like me as a group um, we've come up with something that we would like to send you out of here with there's several somethings I, I know I'm the guy between you guys and the cake <laughs> but I will tell you that uh, the chairman said to me look take your, take the time you need to really talk about our friend that's retiring from uh, from this part of his public service life and so um, we have a certificate of recognition um, it's it's signed by your fellows here um, I'm going to read it because it tells really the whole story uh, this certificate is hereby awarded to Daniel Ensminger Daniel Ensminger has served the town of Reading as a faithful and devoted volunteer since 1981 during his 38 years of committed service, he has served as a member of the Industrial Land Commission charged with the study of best use for the Reading Landfill, resulting in the Walkersbrook Commercial Development Project. Daniel was a charter member of the Community Planning and Development Committee, and more commonly known as CPDC during its inception year of 1986. He served as chair of the RMLD Governance Study Committee in 2002 and went on to serve as a commissioner of the RMLD Light Board in 2003. Mr. Ensminger has been a committed member of town meeting since first elected in 1985. <coughs> Dan has served 15 years as a member of the Reading Board of Selectmen, or as it's currently known, the Reading Select Board, serving from 1989 through 1998 and again from 2013 to 2019. The Reading Select Board acknowledges his lifetime of service to our town with its deepest gratitude dated this day, uh, the 26th of March, 2019. Thank you so Thank much. You. There's more. Yep, there's more. There's more. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. Right here. What did I forget, Bill? I know I forgot. Softball team. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. I think we want to get everybody to. I think we have one other thing that needs to go on here. I'm going to turn the floor over to Barry. Uh oh. So, um,. Mm. Dan, now that um, you've got nothing but time, mm -hmm. so this is a gift <laughs> from the board to oh, you. Thank you. So let's open it up. Yeah. Is it is it ticking? It is. It is definitely ticking, Dan. <laughs> but I'm standing next to you. <laughs> yeah, but I know it's your back. Oh my goodness! Look at this. And it, thank it is, you so much. It, it is inscribed. Um, I'm not going to make you take it out and read it. It's <laughs> kind of small, but it says, yep. to Dan Ensminger, thanks for a grateful town. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Barry. This thing's 25 years old, so right. I think we should get a picture together. Yeah. 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 Let's do that. Come on, Bob. You need to be in the middle. The middle. Come on. Who's supposed to be right in the graphic here? 
Wait a minute. One more. Yeah. How about, how about that one? Yeah, how about by the cake? How about, how about that one? Okay. Okay. You guys all stand Let's go in here. You want us in here? Yeah. 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 Come on, we're going to go in here. Oh, yes. Someone's going in Okay. Sure. <laughs> Try to cut it. Yeah. 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 Almost done. So we'll, are we handing out? Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How, how big should I get in here? Get your piece. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it will be a tad more. Well. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 That's a big cake. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I don't like you don't? I feel okay. But, uh, you'll miss you. But, uh, you know, you. Thank you. Outstanding. Okay, enough bling. Let's get to work. I did. I don't need it. And we're not done yet. <laughs> um, Go ahead. There. John is correct mm. that I asked him to speak at length about Dan's career. Oh, I'll wait for a minute. Yeah, they're going to take it Okay. So, so I did. Well, congratulations. All right. Great. So, still luck to you. All right. Five minute break to eat your cake. All right. Good. Good. I did, I did ask John to take his time on this. We, we do have an extremely full schedule tonight, and, and I'm, I'm, I, mean, I mean that. But <clears throat> given Dan's years of service, I think the time thank you. was well spent. And John, thank you for giving such a um, great 
presentation and his years of service. I'd just like to take a, a brief moment if uh, any other board members uh, would like to say a few a, a few words to Dan. I, I certainly do. But um, also, also. go ahead. Um, <coughs> so, Dan, I, I have the shortest term on this board at the moment. Um, but you welcomed me warmly, and you were um, oftentimes my resource for questions that I had behind the scenes. Um, so I, I thank you. It's been an honor. I'm sad to see you go. But um, I wish you much happiness in your free time. Thank you, Vanessa. Much appreciated. Um, Dan, I would like to um, express my sincerest gratitude toward you. Um, be because uh, being chair is a difficult job. And I was able to turn to you for, I think, age-old wisdom and your institutional knowledge of how a, sh a chair should be. And um, I, that was a huge help in, 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 in this past year for me. And, and I greatly appreciate it. And to, to people who have watched, um, sometimes Dan and I are on opposite ends of issues. But to those out there who don't believe the board can still work together in spite of our differences, I think Dan is a perfect example of how, um, you know, being having some different views on the board does not stop us from advising each other and also working together very, very well. I enjoyed uh, the time with you on those subcommittees. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Most of uh, what I wanted to say to Dan, I've already said privately. But um, I will say this. I've been on the board for four years, served um, with um, many of you and, and, and some others. And I have to say that of all the people that I've served with, I've learned the most from Dan. So thank you. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Well, thanks, everybody. It's pretty, pretty overwhelming. Uh, you know, you, you think about what this is going to be like tonight and uh, all this stuff hits. <coughs> um, this Reading's a great town. I, I have always loved this town, always will. Um, and, uh, you know, someone once said, uh, it doesn't, as long as you get something done, it doesn't matter who gets the credit. I've kind of tried to live that way. Uh, so all the things you said, John, I appreciate, but uh, I didn't do any of those things alone. I had a great team with me, behind me. <clears throat> this gentleman here, and so proud to serve with him and with Ray Miguez and the whole town staff. You're just outstanding. Uh, you've made uh, my job easier as a selectman, and uh, thank you for that. Uh, I won't go away. I'm going to stay tuned. Uh, who knows what the future holds? Uh, I think it is time to just... Uh, turn things down just a little bit and see what the future holds. But uh, thank you so much for your generosity tonight. And uh, I was kind of hoping I'd get a, a street sign that said Ensminger Way because I was going to point to it and say, when you found her, just remember the Ensminger Way. <laughs> Did I tell you it needed to be Ensminger Way? <laughs> I knew that. That's all right. That, Whatever it is. I've lived with that for five years. <laughs> that was a challenge, we, you know, um, I, I must admit that, that was bandered about, but there were some complications. Oh, so. The sign maker um, retired. The sign maker retired. The sign maker's gone. Yeah, and, and, um, That's a good job for you. Yeah. Right. Hey. <laughs> so, again, thank you, Dan. Thank you, guys. Thank you thank, thanks, Reddick, for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, Bob, when Dan was elected the second time around, he approached me and said, Perhaps if I had known you were interested in the job work in, I wouldn't have bothered. Yeah, I figured the new person was going to need me, and um, <laughs> I told him right away, and I'll, I'll tell him for the second time tonight, I'm really glad you ran because this guy got as much out of your presence as anyone else could have. So thank you, Dan. Um, I served with Peter for a long time, but you predated my days with Peter, yep. and you brought so much background. Um, and the right thing to do does not necessarily uh, always, you know, kind of shine forward without the historical element. 
and, and people yeah. sometimes lose track of that. And um, I think it's very important to drive with your eyes out the front uh, mm -hmm. wind, wind, windshield. One eye in the But the rear view yeah. mirror is there for a reason. And uh, thank you so much for your guidance and your thank wisdom you. over the years. Thanks. Well Thanks, everybody. Put. Well put. Really appreciate it. So, in 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 the desire to um, take uh, uh, echo what uh, John said, I, I think it would be a great tribute to Dan if we were able to allow sufficient time to come to consensus on the policy that, that Dan has worked so hard on. Um, with that in mind. Um, the board is willing, I would like to um, leave our liaison reports until our next meeting unless there is a pressing issue. I, I, that, okay, I'll start with let's Vanessa. Yeah, postponed, because... Do, do you not want to... I mean... Okay, I, I yeah. think the certificate... Okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the Reading 375th is going to kill me, but... Um, I'll take my lumps. <laughs> All right, Bob, anything to report? Uh, nothing that can't wait. Thank you. Thank uh, you. In the packet, there was a little item that I, I did want to preview for your next meeting, probably 321 Pearl Street. So if you just all uh, look at that over the weekend, the packet came out as a driveway where it was. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thanks tonight. Thank you. Um, and now we will go to the public comment set portion of the meeting. Um, if you would like to speak, please state your name and address. Please direct your comments to the chair. Um, and as a reminder, please keep your comments to items, items that fall under this board's authority. Um, yes. Bill Brown, 28 Pat Road. Um, John in his presentation about one little thing. Dan is often seen down at the recreation field with his beer shirt on. <laughs> the beers. Right. The beers. Yeah. I'm the official scorekeeper, but I do not play. <laughs> I, I know that. And uh, you, you hop all around the same thing. Dan, I want to thank you sincerely for the amount of time you were. Thanks, Bill. Thank you very much. You've always been a gentleman. Thank you, Bill. Any other public comment? Yes, Carla. Carla Bacci, Friday for Main Street. I'd like to thank Dan personally. Um, I haven't seen him much. And I hope he'll still be a resource to the current board and to whoever else gets elected. And I'm sure you will be because you've done a great resource to the town. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Carl. He won't be given much choice. <laughs> a short leash. All right. Um, moving on from public comment into the minutes. Bob, is it allowable to... Step down, Bob? No, he's here. Um, I know this is... I know we said we wouldn't do this, but is it possible to uh, approve the minutes at our next meeting or... Will the town clerk you get upset with us? Uh, I'll just tell her it's your fault. That's fine. Um, is the board amenable to this? Thank you. Yep. All right, great. I'll have to abstain. <laughs> <laughs> we can put, we can put in all, what you said. All in sorts of, of lucky. Um, I had all spiel on how the hearings go, um, but I gave that last at the last meeting, so let's just jump right into them. Uh, the first one, oh, good, it's after 7.30. Um, the first one, uh, Vanessa is going to read the public, uh, the legal notice in a minute, but it's a hearing on the amendment to select board policy article 1.6.8. It's about how to deal with surplus. I won't say any more so that, because I know Matt is going to speak to this question, to this issue. Vanessa. To the inhabitants of the town of Reading, please take notice that the select board of the town of Reading will hold a public hearing on March 26, 2019 in the select board meeting room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, to amend select board policy article 1 by adding section 1.6.8 surplus at 7.30 p.m. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic will be available in the select board packet made public on Tuesday, March 19, 2019 and on the town website. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 4 p.m. on March 26, 2019. By order of the town manager. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, so I'd now like to introduce 
or welcome Matt Finalis to <laughs> give us a presentation on why this amendment is necessary. Thank you. And I'm going to defer most of it to Allison Jenkins, who's our procurement officer, and worked very hard on this um, amendment. And I'd also like to thank um, Dan, since I'm sitting right next to thank you. Matt. <laughs> thank you very much. Dan was on the committee that hired me four years ago. Right. Right. And, um, and it was a great interview process, and I knew um, dealing with people like Dan that Reading was going to be a good fit for me. And he's been very helpful on cable and a lot of different issues, so I want to start off by thanking you for your service. We'll miss you. Anything you need? I'm Thanks, still the ombudsman. Give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were a good choice, by the way. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. So I'll turn it over to Allison. We're, we're basically asked to replace a bylaw with a um, with a policy from you, the select mm -hmm. board, regarding surplus. It's going to make things a lot easier. We're going to comply with state law, and um, it's already been through the bylaw committee, finance committee. They've agreed that as long as you accept this policy, that they'll go along with it, and then it will go to a town meeting. So I'm going to ask Allison to sort of give a little bit of a review, then we'll both answer questions about it. So. Uh, board members, this is, starts on page 5A1 of our packet. So for the town of Reading, um, when I came on board and you centralized all the procurement, um, Matt asked me to look at our surplus policies. Um, and we did research from other surrounding towns. And we're only one out of two towns that actually have it as a bylaw. Most towns use it as a policy. The Mass General Law states for any items above 10,000, you have to follow Mass General Law. Right. And it has a process and procedure to follow. And it states for any items below $10,000, it um, expects each town to set its own policy on how to um, get rid of their surplus items that they're no longer in need for. So we wrote a policy, brought it to the bylaw, brought it, brought it to your finance committee um, they were okay with the policy as long as they knew that if the bylaw was removed your board would implement a policy and the policy just shows the steps that would need to be taken by board um, department heads that would then bring all of their written requests to the town manager who would then review their requests and then bring them in front of you and then we would sell them appropriately. It's basically a summation of what would happen. Good. Thank you very much. Um, any, will de the board will deliberate on this uh, a little later, but does the board have any questions yeah. of, of Alice or, or, yes. Thanks, Mr. Yeah. Chair. So essentially, is this a, a more, um, uh, efficient process because right now it goes through town meetings it means once each so if a department had something that like in July that it wanted to get it would have to wait until the following year so it has to warehouse it maintain it store it not be able to kind of improve on it mm -hmm. so the way this is written as I understand is it allow us to kind of make the decision so we can envision three or four times a year that this is an agenda item because something comes up that we want to kind of move around. And most of the time we, yeah. we use these for trade-ins. So if we want to buy something, exactly. we can't. Yeah, so I think that's definitely a more, you know, it's a better mousetrap, I think. Yeah, and we'll and still, everything will be advertised. We, I sell most of our items on um, gov deals, and I would still... Um, put notices on our website and make sure it's advertised to all our residents, but it is much more efficient. <coughs> but as I also understand, anything over 10,000 would go through the normal process, go through town meeting, so. There's a law, yeah, we have so to follow the The one law. that we've been doing all along. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Any other questions? That makes sense. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes Dan. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Matt, your last paragraph said this does not apply to RMLD. Uh, or a disposition of materials from the Board of Library Trustees, is it meant to also apply to the school committee? So any town, does yeah, town we, include we, the schools? We, we do the schools yeah. on, on most things, so I think it would include the schools, but so, not RMLD, yeah, not so the library. That was not an omission. No, 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 okay. yeah, yeah, we do we do, do school. Um, Very good. Allison does um, procurement for both the schools <laughs> and uh, the town. That okay. was part of her role here. So. <laughs> any, any reason why RMLD isn't on there? Is it just that they, they have their own statutory process? or? So the bylaw was originally written 
that it would you would exclude RMLD and um, library materials, and I wasn't looking to try and change that part of the process. It's certainly something that you could look at with working with RMLD, but it was yep. it was always has been excluded, so I just left the exclusion. Okay, one day my possible future look at that by law committee. Yeah. I, I have a, any any other questions? <laughs> I have a, just a quick question. Um, just before it says value greater than ten thousand, um, should there's an ABC there, mm -hmm. solicit quotes, a few companies, uh, then advertise surplus property, etc. Mm -hmm. um, should an ignorant question should B come before A? In other words, we advertise first and then solicit quotes. So it's you. We could do any of these items. So we could solicit quotes, mm -hmm. or I could just advertise it on your town website, or um, we could donate it to. So it's uh, one of the three, whichever yeah. is. You don't do all of them. Right, right, right. And, and mm -hmm. that is that yeah, should have been tipped off by the A, B, or C <laughs> right. before end. My apologies. Um, all right. If there are no other questions, I will open this up to public comment. Uh, how many people would like to um, speak on this topic? Seeing none. Um, do I have a? Um, Motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Dan. Third. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I didn't know whether you were trying to say something or. Uh, all right. All, all in favor of closing the hearing. Um, I have a motion. So uh, yes. Uh, move that the board approve the addition of section 1.6.8 surplus policy to Article One of the Select Board Policies as amended. Second. Second. Thank you, Dan. Um, discussion it makes all sense in the world. Efficiency and government in the same sentence is always yeah. something I'm a big fan of. <laughs> all right. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of adopting this by uh, Vanessa's motion. Mr. Chairman, before you call the next hearing, could we take a, br a brief moment and do some housekeeping as the subcommittee? Yes. And I'd like to call the subcommittee to order, which is co-posted with this meeting. Yes. This is the subcommittee on the uh, town manager evaluation and goals. Yes. Uh, and the sole business of this is to approve our last set of minutes and minutes for tonight. Yes. Which will simply state we approve these minutes. Yes. I have a draft of that. I think I circulated a copy to you and all board yep. members. Yep. It's just you and I yep. doing the approving. Do you have any comments on the nope. minutes? Is there a motion? To make a motion to approve the min minutes as proposed. 314? Yep. Second. 314. Uh, all in favor? Yep. And I, I move to approve the minutes of uh, 226 19, which shall simply state we approve the minutes. 326. Mm -hmm. What did I say? Two. Three. Three. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was four weeks ago. Um, Is that seconded? Yes. Okay, all in favor? Okay, move to adjourn the subcommittee. That's it. Proceed. Wow. wow. Um, who is going to do that next time? Yeah. <laughs> it's not going to be me. No, this, yeah, hey, I buy him books, I send him to school, and still he doesn't yeah, work. It's going to be. Bob. Bob. I just want to thank Allison. Um, you've set the bar high tonight. Um, she's in her last week on her selectman oh, no. in her oh, community. That's right. so, so, I will be on April Fool's Day. Yes. Yes. Really? Yeah. Thank you for your service. Yeah. Thank you for your Thank service. You. We get that, Allison. We actually Is it get Hamilton? That. Hamilton? Yeah. 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 Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yes, exactly. Matt, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Good Thanks job. Again. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're just waving goodbye. I'm waving. Great. Um, moving on, I want to make sure we're not uh, jumping too far ahead. No, we're perfect. No, we're, we're good on time. Yep. yep. Um, <clears throat> Next, we'll have a hearing on the amendment to the board policy 1.3.3 that will replace the town manager's goals. Um, over to Vanessa to read the legal notice for the hearing. 
To the inhabitants of the town of Reading, please take notice that the Select Board of the Town of Reading will hold a public hearing on March 26, 2019 in the Select Board Meeting Room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Uh, in order to amend the Select Board Policy, Article 1, by replacing Section 1.3.3, <coughs> Town Manager Goals, at 7.45 p.m. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic will be available in the Select Board Packet, made public on Tuesday, March 19, 2019, on the Town website. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing and may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 4 p.m. on March 26, 2019, uh, by order of Town Manager. Second. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm jumping ahead. Okay. The over in the oh, hearing. I'm sorry. Uh, over. Yes, I'm sorry. No, I'm done. Okay. So, Dan has agreed to um, lead this portion of the public hearing. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we have uh, retitled 133 uh, to process for evaluating the town manager. I think it just spoke to the goals before, but we've beefed it up and added some other things. <clears throat> there are uh, three major sections. Uh, the first one deals with the town manager's contract and the requirements thereof in 1331. The second section, 1332, is the process for setting town manager goals with uh, the requested timelines, uh, et cetera. Uh, in the minutes that you all received, I laid out the charter for this group. Uh, and the, the basic things you were asked to do, formalize the process for the annual evaluation and, in, and uh, include that as a revision to 133 <coughs> and recommending a, a yearly process and timeline for jointly agreed upon goals between the board and the town manager. And then recommending a suitable form uh, for evaluation of the town manager's performance. Now, I have circulated to you for information only this evening, it's not part of the hearing, a form from F FY15 that I think embodied the, uh, the four elements of what we were looking for. Bob, if you could just go down to that. Oop, disappeared. No, I'm gonna find it. This one? Yeah, just ro roll down a little bit more. Well, okay, that that's the form. Um, it, it, and I want to talk about the four one. elements, which are Sorry, okay. the select board chair of, uh, no, that's the wrong thing, evaluation of progress toward meeting goals. So the form uh, does deal with that. Setting and measuring of core competencies, which the form deals with. <clears throat> measuring achievement of daily responsibilities. I think that could be layered over what's in there fairly easily. And then highlighting areas of necessary professional growth. And Bob, if you could bring the form up again. Um, what I liked about this form was there's, there's a lot of white space and, and place for comments right. and specific, specifically topical comments right at the point of the goal. So there's not just one big amalgamated thing at the end. Uh, now one interesting aspect is that if you'll note there were, uh, actually there were six respondents. I think we had Marcy West weighing in after the fact. We can't do that anymore. Uh, I don't know if uh, open meeting law allows us to identify specific comments from specific members that might have to be, you know, select member A, B, C, D, E, uh, but that's something Matt and uh, HR will work out. So I've kind of commended this over to them to look over and bring back to you guys. That will be some work you're going to do uh, beyond this point. So I just wanted to say that about the form. All right, getting back to uh, the policy, which is the subject of what we're dealing with. Um, I just went over the, uh, the four uh, goals of the uh, goals of, uh, and I didn't talk about the goal setting. We are, uh, we have a timetable. Uh, by June 30th, the town manager will provide draft goals. And uh, he can provide as many as he wants, but between five and 10 of them, the subcommittee agreed should be prioritized. That's a reasonable number uh, to work toward. It's not to say we can't have others, but uh, one of the comments we heard was that there's just too many goals and they're not prioritized. So that was our way of dealing with it. Uh, and at, one, at least once every two years, the select board will review the evaluation process, including the form. So that's built into the, the, uh, the policy. And I mentioned the four uh, aspects of the form. Uh, and then the town manager will give qu at least quarterly uh, status reports on how he's achieving his or her goals. And consistent with the town manager's contract, 
if there are concerns about the town manager's performance, we, we kicked this around for a while, and what we came up with was that there should be a private discussion with the town manager and a representative of HR. Uh, not necessarily documenting it in any kind of an email or public sense, but the fact that that meeting happened would be known to, to several parties. And that uh, only uh, issues of concern that are discussed in such meetings should be part of the annual evaluation. That if that if something has been brought up, it's not fair to kind of lay that on him, you know, in September for the first time. So that was our approach to dealing with that. Um, and then uh, we're going to have an August 15th deadline to submit individual inputs into the evaluation on the approved form. So there's some time to approve that form, but not, not a lot of time. We've got a couple of months to, uh, to do that. And so again, that'll be between June 30th and August 15th. Well, starting now and... Uh, what, I, what I'm getting at is, one, we've cycled around. Ah, yes, because then you'll have the goals by June 30th. It'll right? be June 30th, yep. and you're looking at June 30's goals in the evaluation you'll of August have, 15th. You'll have the draft goals in, by the end of June, and I think the final goals sometime in August, about the time you're going to be picking that form up. So they, they can be put into the form in time to get it to you guys. That was the intent. And then staff will do the collating of individual submissions that can no longer be done by uh, members of the select board. And the evaluation should be completed by September 30th. So I think I'll leave it at that and turn it over to the board for questions. <coughs> and at this point, I just want to hear questions. We will eventually make a motion once we close the hearing, and then that would be the time for any suggested amendments. Yes. Oh, there you well, go. He's, he's, I'm, oh, he's Mr. Chair. I, I, he's the chair. <laughs> Mr. Subchair. Mr. Subcommittee is, Chair. Okay. Subchair. Subchair. Nice. Subchair. So, um, I mean, I see in 331, basically, it's just kind of a, co a you know, collation of what's right. what's in the contract. Yeah, so, and, and that kind of lays it out. What which comes is, which is actually good that that's, uh, that it kind of just explains And, and the only disadvantage of that is if the contract changes, you have to change this. Right. But I don't that see that the contract would really change yeah. in those areas. Um, um, in the original motion that I made that kind of sort of did, you know, that kind of set this off, I, I think what my intention was is that basically the board and the town manager will collaborate. Yeah. And this here, in the language here, it says are encouraged to collaborate. And I'm just wondering if that leaves room for not collaborating and and, and so um, uh, I will be open when we get to the discussion okay. on the motion to a friendly okay. amendment on that the other um, the other piece on that first bullet um, uh, goal setting process during public meetings beginning in May and June one of the things that I, and I think maybe you would even know this because you were on the board back in the day um, did the board ever just like you know, with the manager, maybe with some staff, retreat and really just like sit down, like take, you know, not yeah. as part of trying to jam in yeah. during other kind of agenda items, but basically say, take a Saturday in the Matera cabin. I know for open meeting law, we have to post right. it and stuff, but just to really kind yes. of I think sit the year down and- It might have been the year before you came on, yeah. uh, the Reading 2020, Bob. Was that your first year or was that with Pete? First or second, my first year. Second. second. I was involved in that. You weren't involved in that. I no, guess. I don't so know. I think no. that was probably the year before yeah. we, we actually, where we have a retreat over at Jordan's. Jordan's, yeah. Yeah, the whole board was there with some staff. and uh, It was open. It was a public yeah. meeting, yep. but yeah. it was, you know, it it's was off site. suggestion. We've done it, and it's certainly time to do it again. And maybe it's not, it has to be memorialized in policy, mm. but maybe no. in culture. You know, that, yeah. that's something that we would kind of want to do because, you know, we're jamming ourselves with all different agenda items and, and there's some just when you're in the middle of really a good discussion, you know, you got to move on to something else. So I, I just wanted to um, uh, encourage that. Um, right. So that was that was. Uh, I have some others, but I'll, I'll yield for now and just. You know. I have a question for you, Dan. Sure. So in the very first paragraph of one three three one. Yep. Um, I noticed it said the select board has entered into a three-year contract with the town manager, uh, and this is true. I referenced the. Um, charter and it says the board of selectmen shall appoint a town manager and may enter into a contract with the town manager not exceeding three years in length Correct. so from a policy perspective did you t did you and andy talk about the fact that you know let's be realistic the policy doesn't get reviewed very often right and so from a from a longevity perspective did you mm -hmm. discuss um 
<coughs> catering this specifically for our current town manager or you know five ten years down the line because the in the eventuality that in the eventuality of that you know at yeah. some point all of us will be gone and Bob presumably will retire at some point so I'm not going anywhere if <laughs> hopefully that's it <laughs> uh, but but from a longevity perspective because policies don't get reviewed oh, very often I see. The, the this technically um, is is written with one town I, manager I think we yeah I'll accept something friendly that would say the select board uh, has tradition if for some years the select board has entered into a three-year con contract the latest example is uh, or just says or just say a contract oh yeah a contract and that wasn't always true uh, by the way in the original charter the town manager lived Tuesday to Tuesday yeah other towns don't yeah. so and that's why you know I Mm -hmm. I, I think I thought that was fabulous. I think you should stipulate a contract. And correct me if I'm wrong, Bob. But it would be pretty tough to attract a successor without the promise of a contract of some kind. It, yeah, I'd say it's harder these days. I, yeah. I think Vanessa's got a good point. It's yeah, three years too specific. Right. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll. So that was my that. only. I think yep. you're always going to have a contract. I think the terms of the contract would be much more involved or much simpler. Mm -hmm. But I don't think anyone is going to, and town council is not going to want you to have someone. When the charter recommends a course of actions, right. it's, the contract could be simple or complex. That was okay. my only question. Any other questions, comments? Uh, <coughs> Nothing else on the board. Well, so that'll get amended, right? We're, we're going to get to that after we yeah. close the hearing. Okay. This is just to get all discussion out. So we'll follow the same pattern for Articles 1 and 2 also. Okay. Yes. I close the hearing. Not yet. He didn't, he's, he's scanning here. Uh, am I the only one? Oh, because there was a couple. I, I, I wrote, wrote them down, but. Uh, yeah. You sure? Uh, Take your time. Uh, just, uh, I don't want to hold anything up. You're not. So, um, let's get. Oh, the two year. Where are you? Um, 133? Yeah. Multi year goals. Oh, both. Yeah, it's actually in 332. Um, yeah, we kept that kind of ge generic. Yeah. Um, I think it's actually. In, I mean, I'm glad it's in here because yeah. some of the things that we want to do are not going to be accomplished in a year. So um, to break them down um, and to have a reasonable expectation of um, when they could be done, but then be able to measure them. Yeah. Okay, well, in year one, we're going to do this, and in year two, we're going to do that. And if it doesn't get done in year two, well, we should kill, <laughs> kill the goal. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So um, I think that's really important and, mm -hmm. and I don't know if it needs to be any amended anything beyond that but um, sure. we don't have multi-year goals it was never really um, put in have there. you ever had multi-year goals I, I, don't know if um, I think stuff came out of 2020 certainly <coughs> you know from a practical standpoint yes yeah. yeah it was you know part one part two part three but I don't think it was ever stated but this the, way uh, th this puts metrics on it yeah you, you've really got to be able to say well this was met right. this wasn't met on a yearly right. basis the other thing and I'm not sure um, if it's in here or I didn't see it, is there an expectation that um, we're going to have the town manager evaluate him or herself and then give that to us for evaluation? I think in some earlier discussions with Bob, it was suggested that not be formalized. Um, I, I, I would be a little hesitant to put that into a policy. Yeah, you, you and Andy were talking about yeah. it. Um, as a manager, I ask the department heads I review directly to do that. <coughs> um, I don't think you need to put it in writing. All you do is ask me if you want it. Um, if you put it in writing, it, it must be done all the time. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a, I think good, it's a good idea. Yeah. I mean, I, I, it, it, that's what we do. I mean, I do yeah. mine first, and it goes to the manager, and then they review it, yeah. and then we discuss it. And we, we, uh, we put in the idea of a self-evaluation here, town, town manager May. Uh, oh, oh the, so I, did I miss it then? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. there. Well, actually, is that what you consider? Well, that means he reviews us. You mean that? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, he, he no. He oh, no. Well, Self-evaluation is yeah. in there. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That, that would, would be, be that must see TV. Be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you still You're talking 360 yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. They'll, uh, yeah. they'll buy popcorn for that. No, one. I was not meaning that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Mr. Uh, uh, yes. Ensminger. Um, that, I think, is when we talked about the end of year review, mm -hmm. the uh, f fifth bullet or something says the town manager self-review, if approved, 
by the board as part of the process is also due no later than August yes. 15th. So we left the possibility open. But still, I'm sorry, yeah, I right missed there. it. Okay. Okay. Um, but we didn't want to make it a okay. shall. Okay. Any, any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public on the town manager review of Mr. Brown? Yes, Dan. Uh, you mentioned something every two years you're going to review, review this. Or something? We're going to review the process and the review form. Can I suggest that you at least every two put in there either autumn year or even year? That way, if somebody no. forgets what the heck year it's written in the it's written in the policy and it shows review on the odd year or yeah. even year. Uh, it, your choice. Yeah, I'm not quite seeing the reason for that. Well, it's just in case you lose track. Last year, oh, I was always going to oh, lose oh. track. Okay. So we're in an odd year. We certainly And are. we've built it. <laughs> we are that. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Okay. All right. If someone would like to make an amendment to that effect later, no, that's fine. Any other public comment? Mr. Doxer. Uh, Mark Doxer, you <coughs> wrote. Uh, just a question. Is there an opportunity either for staff review or public review to become part of the review process? That not directly. Not directly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is the purview of the board to <coughs> supervise its employee, right? Yeah. So. Well, I think that the citizens are represented by the elect by the people they put in to do such an evaluation and manage the manager. So, I mean, in essence, that's being done, you know, in a de facto way. I, that's the way I would yeah. look at it, anyway. You know, you know. I'm just wondering if there's an opportunity to get to you. If there are issues that are being brought up, just go well, on. That happens every day. Go yeah. on the top <laughs> website. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Bob, ignore you know. that. Uh, <laughs> should you be elected, you'll understand that. <laughs> um, uh, I'm just wondering, do you need the because everything here is laid out in terms of the process? Is that something that would be something that should be there? In other words, the process lays out that every quarter. There should be a review, right? Essentially, mm -hmm. folks are going to be doing to the town manager. Right. Do you want to have some structure whereby there could be input to that that comes to you? And, and, and I take your point, John. You're probably getting them regularly through these meetings. Yeah. All the new things that come up. So you're saying specifically yeah. with regard to the goals or with regard to other attributes of performance? Uh, well, I think probably the, the attributes will come up regularly. I just yeah. wanted more specific to the goals. I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't have a public comment uh, s section during the quarterly evaluation. Would that be sure. something entertaining? Yeah. 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 We have public comment every meeting. Uh, they can do it then, yeah, or sometimes. Uh, it might be nice to have something specific, too. Mm -hmm. We might not get a lot of comment, but. Again, the chair, chair has a lot of latitude in how oh, yes, we will. <laughs> he, he, he or yeah. she can uh, admit public comment during these proceedings. So I. Again, I'll leave it up to the board to decide if you want to add some language. Once we could add language that's um, um, not necessarily concrete, but that mm -hmm. um, <coughs> suggests that um, best practice. All right. So well, not necessarily. Think about what you want to do, because we're, yeah. oh. we're almost done with the hearing. So. Um, Bob has a. Yes, Bob. If I might, uh, the ombudsman would tell you it's very difficult to put a, a watch on public comment. Yeah. It's going to be agenda-driven, issue-driven. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to pay attention to your agenda, your calendar. <coughs> True. Um, so it's just going to flow in whenever it flows in. Um, and whether it flows into you directly or maybe mm -hmm. to the ombudsman, you just have to make sure those channels are open. Yep. I have one last question. Sure. Um, building up with what Mark said, I know I had raised the idea of the um, 360 reviews um, for staff as part of the evaluation process. Is that something two of you discussed? I think Bob weighed in on that earlier. Yeah, I asked department heads. They refused to do it. Pretty simple. OK. Um, can, can, but why? this one, yeah. Why, why if I may? Um, they had no desire to make any comment about the town manager in public. Mm. That it would have to become right. public. We do this stuff all the time, so it's not like there's any surprises. They public. didn't want to be subject to a public process mm -hmm. that would be different from how we already manage ourselves, I guess. I mean, you can certainly add to it if you have any questions. No. No, Dave. It's just, uh, <laughs> you know, I was very open-minded. Um, probably more than, honestly, most managers would be. 
and the department heads just saw this as a slippery slope. We actually talked about this a couple of times, two or three years back. Yes, you did. And um, there was a lot of pushback from the from the managers inside the department because everything has to be out here. You know? yeah. And you know, I could certainly understand why you know somebody who is who didn't sign on to be out here. Um, would feel right. uncomfortable with that. I think that's. Well, you know, and my predecessor of, through the ICMA uh, signed up for a 360 evaluation by Department of Heads. That was a big deal. We talked about it for a couple of months, and then we never did anything. So I'm not quite sure what happened. Yeah. But I know he ran into some flaws, some difficulties in the public sector. You know, this is public as both a private company. It would make sense. And the other part of this is, as compared with Andy and Dan, the HR um, laws are always best practices are yep. evolving. Um, you will see in the next evaluation the board does, there's a lot more privacy. Yep. Um, the, the material that you will individually send to HR is now protected as part of a um, personnel evaluation. The composite can be made public. Your individual comments cannot be made, or I should say your rankings cannot <coughs> be made public. Unless I authorize it. Uh, can, so. can it be individual A, B, C, D? No, 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 I authorize it. No, I, okay. it's, I'll check with Labor okay. Council and make sure. Well, that's, that's work you for you guys to do between now and now. All I'm saying yeah. is the HR landscape is complex and changing all the time. So you just want to be careful of what you put in the policy that just needs to stay <coughs> flexible. the written comments? I have to check with Labor Council. Those are important. I, think, I think it's okay. Those are important for the public to know how we are evaluating yeah. our employees. Right. This is just um, new this winter. Okay. okay. Well, Superintendents so, and town managers. So that's something Matt, Judy, are going to come in. They'll figure it out. Okay. Yeah. Matt, they'll work together. Right. Well, any other comments, uh, questions before we close the hearing? <coughs> hearing none, is there a motion to close the hearing? Move to close the hearing. <coughs> Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Uh, so I am going to move uh, that the. Uh, Board approved the replacement of section 133. Uh, it's now going to be called process for evaluating the, the town manager uh, in article one of the select board policies as amended. So we're changing the title of that. Uh, say replacement and renaming. So let me be specific there. So move that the board approve the replacement and renaming of section 1.33 process for evaluating the town manager in article one of the select board policies as amended. Is that se can I ask that Andy be the seconder? Yes, I second. We are in a position to accept friendly amendments now as uh, the subcommittee. Oh, are, you, are you writing them down? When I, uh, I wrote the three year one, uh, I, that's all. I have one uh, under 1331, I think, uh, Here's what I'm going to suggest, uh, Bob, if you I'm ready. follow the bouncing ball there. Um, I'm going to have it read this. In accordance with Article 5.1 of the Reading Home Rule Charter, the select board uh, has entered into a contract with the town manager, period. Okay. And then this is new. The current three-year contract can be found at, and then the URL. Three year, you might want to put in. Yeah, I'm suggesting three year be included. What current three year. If it's not a three year. Well, we're talking about the current contract current. now. Yeah. But this is your the, policy. The first. Um, right, I think that was. Oh, okay, current yeah, may change. Right. But that's where the contract will be. Yeah, so it'll always yeah, be. It just resides. Okay. That's can fine. We, can point. we change it from has entered to may enter into a contract with the town manager? Yeah, I meant to say that. Yeah, I wrote man and I forgot that, to say that's it. in keeping what's in that's the charter. That's fine. Yeah, I had written that down, then I got crossed over. May have okay. entered. Um, is, this, is the seconder accepting that amendment? Um, that, let me just read it. So it okay, may be heard. Heard. We don't need to vote on it if you do. Select board may have. Can we remove the have? Yeah, just may, may enter. May enter. May enter. Just may enter into. Yeah, yeah. removed have. Or has may enter into perfect. Yep. There you go. So flex forward may enter into a contract with the town manager. The current contract is found at. So that's how we'll read. Yeah. Right. So my only um, in, in thinking 
about this policy is going to be sit, sit down for quite a while. Bob, the, the, you, did I hear you say that the contract will, no matter who, who 10 years down the road or whatever, um, five years down the road, the contract will always be found in that location? Yes. Okay. And in the, so, so it's fine. Yes. In the last sentence there, uh, make that current contract for his hero value in the, of the first paragraph, the last sentence. The current, current contract. That should say current. That could change. Um, Do you want that to be a new paragraph with there? Sure. Yeah. Yep. So, and that may have yeah, to, if, if the contract changes materially, yeah, we may have to revisit that section as a policy change. So, but I, I don't anticipate, that's sort of like boilerplate-ish language, I think. Yeah. Um, I, I have a, definitely a friendly, but in the spirit of keeping it gender neutral. Let's go section by section. Anything else in 1331? Anything? 1332? Uh, I have one that covers multiple sections. Sure. It's a very minor one. Yeah. Um, in the spirit of making it gender neutral, as opposed to having his, her, his, or her, can we have it switch to their, or mm. since they're always referencing I, the town manager? Now you're getting my grammar hackles up, because <laughs> now, you, now you're going to a plural think, person. There's other ways to say it. I think town council has a problem with their. Yeah. Okay, so can we can replace it with the town manager? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Is that? Okay. Yeah. I didn't flag all of them, I just flagged that's one. That's fine. That, that's the best way to yeah. fix okay. it. You can do a search and we can refer to them all. Anything for his or her and replace it with we, the uh, top manager. Okay. Is that, do you have a, like a generic change you want to offer in other places? Or um, that's like, that first one. I feel like that one, and I didn't bother with the other. Where's the first? His, okay. her. Uh, the very first the paragraph second, under uh, one three three one. And the second. I'll look to the rest. I, I understand. Okay. Uh, board okay with giving Bob the leeway to yeah. make that okay. fix? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, anything else in one three three one explicitly? One three three two. So we're doing good with them and so far. Yeah, uh, the motioner and the seconder are. We did. Yep, they are in agreement, and we had a third voice saying that's okay. So we know it's fine. We don't have to go to a vote. That's our new rule. I forget which rule number it is, but <laughs> we're already using it. Okay. okay, the town manager and the select board will collaborate. So I'm going to change that in the first bullet. Which one? Uh, this one here. Yeah. Prove Barry's uh, <coughs> suggestion. It's a little stronger. Is that good? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, any secretary okay with that? So j just uh, in thinking this through, uh, <coughs> in relationship to Bob, this board is, is what? Superior, Superior, supervisor. So um, maybe it should read, like Bob has a, a, a he develops the budget in consultation Correct. with the select board, but ultimately, technically, Bob, it's his budget. It, we, it's his budget. He presents it to us. And so maybe not. another way to put it, so that I don't want to give the impression um, to residents that we're not we're we're not um, <coughs> that we're not his supervisors, or we're implying that we're not his supervisors. He could say. Uh, the select board will or shall um, develop the goal setting process in consultation with the town manager. Shall develop. Okay. I think this is just talking about a process. Yes. As opposed to setting the goals. Good point. So I think that that's already elaborate is fine for setting yeah. the goals. I'm yeah. sorry for the process. Right. But then that, your point is well taken on the actual setting of yeah. goals. That's different. Yeah. So I, I have a. Well, kind of, how do you want to. Are hmm. you speaking to this amendment here? Do you want to do it some, somewhat differently? Um, the select board <coughs> will collaverate in the goal setting process. You have other verbiage. Meetings. <coughs> um, that's done. Um, Prioritized by the town manager. Maybe this isn't necessary. Multiple years goals.
Select Board shall discuss, modify, and approve the town manager's <coughs> goals by April 30, August 30th. So I believe that makes it clear that ultimately the board votes on the goals and uh, answers that, that question. So I'm fine with that. Okay. But, yeah. uh, can I just... Yeah. It's sort of part of the struggle I had this year when we were trying to set goals was that we never really defined what a goal is. So if you look in the charter, you know, Bob has, he's the, he's the, C, and basically it's defined, he's the COO. So, you know, in terms of picking up the trash, sending out the tax bills, putting the cops on the, all, all that stuff, right? So, you know, there may be a goal in sort of how to run some of that minor things. When I think of goals, I think of something broader like, you know, in the, by the year 2020, uh, by the year 2022, Reading will have 12% commercial industrial, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, property versus the 10% maybe we have now. So that's a go that's something that's a goal that will have under it multiple layers of different departments, our role, things like that. When I when I envision our jobs, I I don't want to get involved in telling him how to plow the streets. That's not, what, I, I don't think that that's, you know, a good use of our time because that's what we hire him to. What I think our role is as sort of, you know, sort of the executive is to sort of set the broader, you know, far-reaching goals of like what we want to accomplish. You know, something along the lines of what I just said. There, you know, there could be many others. And, that, and when I talk about sort of jointly developing these and sitting down for long periods of time, maybe in a retreat, it's like those kinds of things well, that I want us to be Maybe you're do. focusing on this between five and ten. Those, those are the ones that are really going to be fleshed out with the departments? Is that your thinking? I, I just don't know. I mean, but, but it depends on sort of like what those goals are. If, you know, I know there are times when, I mean, when I first got on the board, I know, Bob, you would do like <coughs> Every quarter you come back and there was sort of like, you know, you broke them down by kind of thing and gave sort of a, you know, percentage check mark about what you, you've you gotten do. done. You, st you still do that. And I, and I think that that's sort of in here. But it's sort of like, those are more of the sort of, you know, day-to-day uh, so you, -day goal. I'm talking about some of the, the you know, the larger policy setting goals, um, which we, you know, I, and we're not going to get to it now. but. Uh, I think that we really need to think about, when we think about goals, are we all thinking about the same thing? That, that's my broad question. All right, so you're not suggesting any additional language? No, just no. Just sort of kind of commending it to the board to think Yeah, about and it. just, because we're yeah. going to come down to it, yep. right? And it's going to be, wait a minute, that's a, that's a goal, but that's not the goal I was thinking of. I was thinking of the goal being this. So at some point, we as a group are the five people at this table, and I have to kind of coalesce around the idea about what it is that we actually are trying to do. That, that's my broad point. All right, any other comments, uh, amendments in section 1332? I had a, oh, no, 1332. Yep, anything? Nope. Moving on to 1333. I had one. Go ahead. Um, so uh, I've been following what's happening in some other towns where, <coughs> let's say that the Board of Selectmen doesn't have quite the cooperative relationship that oh. we are fortunate to have with our town manager. And so- Or each other. <laughs> Yeah. Stone them. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, so. <laughs> Delete that up from the tape. Yeah. Yes, please. So, um, with that in mind, and again, going with longevity <coughs> here in, in under consideration, um, under communication during the year, the, mm -hmm. the, la the third bullet, only concerns discussed during such meetings shall be mentioned in the final evaluation. I agree that that should be the process. Um, there may, again, in the future, I don't see this happening in the near term, um, but policies are supposed to yep. far yeah. extend beyond the immediate people and relationships that we have now. So that, the only concern to me there is if we end up, God forbid, in a situation like some other towns where there isn't a solid relationship and this mm -hmm. cannot happen for whatever reason, it makes it such that... <coughs> concerns or issues with performance cannot be raised um, unless there has been a meeting. Um, again, this would not be an issue for this board or this town manager down the line. God, let's hope that never happens. But if it mm -hmm. does, this makes it very limited. 
I would assume if the town manager is absent from that equation for any reason, is not willing, that the representative from HR would still be spoken to? Yes. And that would provide, I think, your leeway to use that information in the review. If you just talk to HR. I can't imagine both would not talk to you. But HR reports up to the town manager. Yeah, but they've got a certain amount of independence. You know that. Yeah. And again, not yeah. not for this. Um, yeah. But just okay. That that was my only. I'm you not. Wanna, it's not. It's not a hard thing. Suggest any strengthening of wording, or is it just a concern you're expressing? Um. I have a suggestion. Oh, yes. I'll, I'll yes. go. Yep. I'm not sure how to word it, but I'll just say in the absence of such a meeting, such a concern should be put in writing and submitted to HR. Okay. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Like that. So yep. in the absence of such a meeting, yeah, that would be the new third bullet. Or it could be the continuation, I think, of the second bullet. Uh, okay. Of such a meeting. What was the rest of it again? Oh, you're putting it in. Okay. <coughs> Such the uh, okay. I'll say may. These concerns may in writing. Yep. So, so I'm sorry, Dan and Andy. Yep. Was yeah. um sort of the purpose of this section mm -hmm. kind of to allow and sort of memorialize communication that could happen during the year as opposed to just waiting to the end of the year Correct. when, you're, when yeah. you're evaluating it, so that yeah. if there are things that are of concern that there's a process to And it kind of gets it. toward that comment I made about no surprises. Right. Let's, let's yeah. provide a, an, an yeah. avenue to get the stuff aired during the year that is acceptable yeah. to both parties. Our thinking on that, yeah. if, if I may, yep. our thinking on that was that it's not fair to a supervisee if, if something happens that you're unhappy with, not to say anything and then wait right. till right. Uh, the end of the year and while. Right. We, we, I, I, we don't do that where I work. Right. We have a process. Um, and um, that's why we use the word timely. And you'll notice we chose the, uh, in that fourth bullet, highlighting areas of, quote, necessary professional growth, unquote. Oh, we thought that to be a diplomatic uh, yeah, yeah. statement of yeah. the, uh, point is this is a public process and and we don't want to be okay uh, but Jimmy I uh, I have a friendly amendment um, spell well, out before you uh, oh. is everyone accepting that I'm fine with that any, any objection no yep. mm -hmm. Andy you good um, you yeah, ju um, just um, <clears throat> well you know we we could say um, Is there a way to put it so that Representative HR um, concerns may be submitted in writing to human resources and leaving out in the absence of such a meeting that allows people to... Well, we were trying to keep it pe people to people yep. as much as we can. This would True. be like the last resort. True, yeah. yeah. Okay. We have to create a paper trail. Yeah. I, I like that approach. Yeah. And and spell out HR. And the idea is you have the third party in the room. Yeah. No. no, whatever. Sure. <laughs> no, I mean our. I, no, go ahead. Yeah. I, I think we, we should. I mean, spell that. Unless we defined it earlier, the proper courses yeah. to uh, spell it out. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, are we accepting questions from the public at this point? If there is one material to what we're talking about, I Bob. Give a little leeway Could you spell out human mm -hmm. resources? Unless we've in predefined all part, it. In all portions of the document? Or Either that or just... Do um, global. Or just in the first that, time. The first time, say, HR. Yeah. One all right, Mr. Doctor, quickly. Yeah, thank you very quickly. Um, is a friendly question. In the third sub-point, do you need to incorporate what you've just written? In other words, you say in the second point that there's a process, but then the third point doesn't allow for it to... Oh, um... Yeah. Only uh, good point. So only concerns raised uh, during this process shall be mentioned. Is that better? Yeah, Perfect. Because that could be either the oral or the good good show. Okay. Everybody good with that? Yep. Yep. Hey, anything on the end of your review? 
Yeah. Shouldn't it say maybe mentioned? Not uh, sure. May. Mentioned. Yeah. May. Well, the idea is, yeah, because I think the only takes care of the May. It's fine. So only concerns discussed, or rate, only concerns raised during this process may, may be, be mentioned. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And it, it may, they may not be. It's up to the individual. So yeah, good catch. Yeah. Okay, end of year review. Comments? Yeah. Sorry. So on the one, I think the third bullet point, where it talks about newly elected board members should endeavor to complete mm -hmm. as much as they're competent to do, their comments should address uh, performance only for the period of time they've been select board members. Yes. Part of the um, part of the review process is going to include commenting on uh, whether the town manager has achieved her or his goals. But if that member wasn't there to be a part of the goal setting process, is it sh should that mm -hmm. should that member sort of? bow out from that part of the evaluation. I would disagree with that. If the goals are clearly understood by the member, um, I don't see any reason why they can't. And there are clear metrics set forward. It seems to me it's straightforward for that person to kind of plug in. But um, yeah, I mean, ideally, they yeah. would see the process all the way. But we're going to have changes on the board every year, probably, right. potentially. So I mean, I just remember when I yeah. came on, I had to do an evaluation shortly yeah. after I got it's on. It's always a challenge. Yeah, we had some people that just didn't write anything, and, and some. You know, know. I mean, I watched the meetings, but <laughs> yeah, I wasn't and we want to be very specific and, about uh, you. You shouldn't review for the period you were not on the board, right? Because so, I mean, you may have watched the meeting, sat in exactly. the audience, but I think that you know. Yeah. I know we're trying to put it in, sort of. You know, when it's on paper, we're memorializing it, yeah. but I think. It's one of those things where this may be one of the things where a new member on her or his own may determine what they feel comfortable doing as opposed to something that's kind of in there. So, I, you know, I, I just think we need to be careful okay. how that's worded. So I don't have any suggestions, though. In the um, second to last bullet, I just caught the term remedial action. Do we want to use that? Phrase we came up with necessary professional growth in place of that, or do you want to keep it remedial action? I, I, um, Just a thought. I, I, I feel yeah, either way. If, if the majority of board members agree that um, professional development is required, okay, so that would be would necessary it. professional. Yeah. What is the implication of remedial here? Well, that's why well, I'm suggesting we change that language. Yeah, I just propose changing it the, because, because we use the term necessary professional growth. The last bullet of the uh, first part of one three three three. Yeah, the highlighting areas of necessary professional growth, growth so, or development. So, was the point yeah. that when you when you guys developed this was the point um, to suggest that if there was a majority of members through the process of the evaluation that came up with the same kind of or a majority needs improvement or a majority yeah right. or that you know that it was clearly a, a, a pattern oh, i mean even if there were a significant right. minority i would assume any good town manager would address that in, in the coming year in some form or fashion yeah R remedial implies that somebody did something wrong yeah as opposed well, to didn't meet a goal yeah so. dan um, yeah, I think that's why we wanted yeah. to get away from remedial. Yeah. Um, so that's the situation. And, and, okay. and the necessary, we have to. We are trying to think beyond Bob. Yeah. To into the future, and if we get a town manager that just doesn't work out for some reason, or isn't working out, then we need to have a mechanism by which we can say, yeah. you know, there needs to be some professional development here. You guys maybe you need remedial action. I mean, honestly, we're yeah. yeah. It's a supervisory. We're in a supervisory role with an employee. Yeah. From time to time, you have to remediate a problem, and and that's okay. I mean, that doesn't mean that you know the person's a bad person, but you know, and I'm and I'm okay with however we soften this to yeah. not hurt anybody's feelings. But you know, um, I mean, <laughs> honestly, that was Andy's idea. We're going to address. Yeah. An so, yeah. I mean, I don't care how we do that. What the facts say, are, you need to you're, do, you're, you're you need correct. to remediate problems from time yeah, to time. You are. Maybe maybe <coughs> that would be that the board, if the majority of the board members agree that uh, improvement in some area is needed. That would be better. Because mm, cool really what we want to see is if, if the town manager in the, in the majority view is not meeting a certain, uh, some standard. 
that we'd like the person to meet. Mm -hmm. um, then we'd like to improve, have them improve on that. I mean, who can't improve, right? So maybe. Uh, and if they don't let's approve, just go back then. And improve it. Can I just use the word, why don't you just sure. do that? Yeah. If the majority of board members agree that improvement Instead is required. Instead of remedial action. Yeah. 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 Okay. Not the other phrase. Yes, Bob. Yeah. Um, can, you, can you and Andy tell me your, your thoughts about this phrase here that you put in earlier in the form? You came up with that. <laughs> um, do you want to just make that improvement? I think so, yeah. 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 I mean, that, Whatever you want to yeah, do, I think they're. It does sound a little saying. hokey, doesn't it? And what, yeah, I know. I was yeah. trying to come up with a way of uh, areas of necessary improvement. Yeah, I mean, we, I like that. Dan. Without the quotes. Yeah. Okay. So then we're tracking language in yeah. both places. We at work we have um, performance improvement plans. Yep. Um, we could say that, but uh, I don't know. not something you want to be on. Yeah. No, it's not. Either the conversation. <laughs> it's not. Um, but I, th I think that allows for, it sh should we get into trouble or should a board in the future get into trouble with yeah. the town manager? Is it necessary improvement? The, yeah. T. Just no S. Improvements. What's that? There is a necessary improvement. Just singular. Oh. Yeah. What if I have many? Well, uh, areas. Areas. Uh, areas. The plural. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, everybody good with that? Yep. Yes. All right. So if there are no other suggested changes, we did that all in a friendly way, guys. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Let that be a model for... So I forget, are we, are we voting item by item or we'll just do it at the end? No, we're going to do a, a plenary a motion. Okay. For <coughs> I have a motion, unless you want to read it down. Uh, just, you can close the hearing. Yeah. Oh. Motion to close the hearing. Oh, we closed it. I'm sorry. We closed the hearing. So yeah. move, oh, we did. move that the board approve the replace... Can you do this already? I guess no, you can. Well, that's why I asked that we doing yes, each we section do by vote. Because this is a separate yeah. hearing. Yeah. Yeah, we need to do that separately, and then that will be incorporated we'll into. by yeah. reference into the text. Although it doesn't appear in that text, right. multicolored text you have. Um, <coughs> move the board approve the replacement and renaming of section 133 process for evaluating the town manager in article one of the select board policies as amended oh i already did that it's it's done we yeah. just vote yeah yeah i, knew I read that we had discussion discussed, discussed, it. discussed it. okay yeah. so uh discussed any it. further discussion yeah. all those in favor five zero Dan, if you're messing yeah. this up man we're doing um, <laughs> yeah I, I knew i read it already okay so uh, are we going to go to the parking uh, next? Yeah. yeah. The chairman, yeah. back to you. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you. you actually. Really good. No, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, can, can we yeah, we will take a five-minute break right now.
So, no rush on that. You can give it to me. We'll do it after. You could, okay. We'll, yeah. we'll do it after. All right. The board is back in session, and we're moving right along into the uh, hearing on the PTTF safety recommendations. Vanessa, if you'd read the legal hearing. To the inhabitants of the Town of Reading, please take notice that the Select Board of the Town of Reading will hold a series of public hearings on March 26, 2019 at 8 p.m. in the Select Board's meeting room, 16 Lowell Street, uh, Reading, Massachusetts. To, one, establish no parking on Linden Street on the westerly side between Haven Street and Brandy Court. Two, establish two-hour parking on Lincoln Street on the westerly side between Prescott Street and Fulton Street. Three, add two additional 30-minute parking spots in front of 2 Haven Street. Four, establish a new section to allow four-hour parking regulations and enact the new regulation in the two municipal lots in the downtown area. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic will be available in the Select Board packet made public Thursday, March 21st, 2019 and on the town website. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 4 p.m. on March 26, 2019 by order of the town manager. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, I now turn it over to Deputy Chief Clark um, to present on this matter. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I just want to thank Dan uh, from the Police Department. Just Thanks, Chief. Year, I think, for all your support Thanks, everybody. Over the years. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you. And I'm actually going to turn this over to my, I consider my experts in practical traffic safety, uh, traffic safety officer Mike Scout and Lieutenant Christine Amado, all my support service and division commander. Uh, good evening. I stood on uh, the first. Uh, oh, we can't talk and sit. I don't know. Why. The first uh, item up for agenda tonight um, is to ask for a no parking regulation on Linden Street between Haven and Brandy Court. Um, this was asked to us by the fire police chiefs. Um, they have been trying to respond to emergencies down there. They don't ask much of us, and actually, as far as traffic and safety, so they do. We know there's a problem. They did hit, have a problem getting emergency vehicles down there, and they did have a uh, motor vehicle crash while trying to get yeah. um, the engine down there. So we, would, from their uh, suggestion, is that that left side of the street is the best angle for them to turn their um, emergency vehicles. So that is why this no parking has come up. And as you can see here, it's a pretty tight turn, just even for a regular vehicle. That is the first one. Thank you. All right. Any questions? Just questions from the board, not comments or anything. Just if any, if you have any questions about this? How long will it take to, if that, if this all comes through the way it's supposed to? When do the no parking signs go up? I mean, how much warning? I mean, because there's those are full. Those two spots are full all the time. As far as putting signs in, as soon as the DPW tells us the weather is. Um, the ground soft enough to right. set the signs in. That's that's easy. As far as notification, we can do notification to the businesses in the area. We'll always we'll start with warnings the first couple weeks until people get educated. Then we can start with actual tickets. So we really don't have a like an EPA, but because I'm saying you know. Those are used all the time. These are pretty fast. George, uh, the DPW usually has these signs. Yeah. So this one so it'll happen fast once. Yeah, this one can be really fast if we want to. 
Yeah, I mean, we were talking about Abel's view earlier today as to when. That one's a little more complicated, but, you know, broadly speaking, you're, you're looking at four or five weeks from here at the okay. longest. Um, so this one could be late April. It is going to snow next weekend. I'm just saying. I'm yeah. sorry? But I heard. I heard the same thing. <laughs> this weekend? 70, 70 on Friday, but then snow later in the weekend. That wouldn't be on April Fool's Day, would it? Yeah, <laughs> Remember the one on April Fool's Day? Mm -hmm. oh. Any other questions from the board? All right, let's move on to the second portion. Uh, do want a bond? Oh, do, uh, or, uh, it's all one hearing. It's, it's, it's all uh, one hearing. hearing so, yeah. Oh, but it's still all one hearing. Right. It's one hearing. So, so okay. Oh, okay. you're doing so the right thing. We'll keep going, and then the public will have their opportunity to comment, and then um, we'll close the hearing and go from there. Uh, the second amendment uh, that we're asking for is on Lincoln Street, there's actually one portion in all of um, the downtown Reading area that we found that uh, was not actually regulated. According, if you look at um, a lot of the old maps, or any, sorry, the new maps, it does show that there is a two-hour parking restriction. However, it's not in the traffic rules and regulation that there is a two-hour limit um, on Lincoln Street between Prescott and Fulton. So we would suggest to maintain what the maps show and uh, have that as a two-hour parking for visitors around that area. Um, so we just need some regulations in place in that area right now. It's not regulated as by the downtown area, um, as you can see right there. So it would help out if there's, a, if there's any need for visitor parking. And that is, uh, so so someone who's commuting for the day couldn't just Could not park, park there, no. Right, right. Nor, nor construction vehicles. No, not more than two hours, right. right. Wasn't that the part, uh, Mr. Chair? Yes. Wasn't that the section that people said that there used to be a no parking sign and then it disappeared? Or is that on, was that on Fulton Street or was that on Lincoln Street? It people was, believe that there was no parking there. We went down. On that, on the, uh, yeah. on the what we're talking right. about. But there was right. no signs there and then we looked in the traffic rules and regulations and there was nothing about no, that no, one right. section. Okay. It varied earlier when we discussed that Elliott Street. We came to you a couple of meetings ago about Elliott Street that we we're going to put the signs back in. Yeah. That was one area that there was signs there. When they redid the street and sidewalk, the signs never got put back up. Okay. So that was one area that would always was the signs just never got put okay. back up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is just showing that that's the map that is out there and it does have to add as a two hour. Okay. Um, and the next. Um, PTCF recommendation is um, down on Haven, Lower Haven Street, we've talked to some business owners who suggested we needed more short-term parking. So we would suggest that you'd add two additional 30-minute parkings on the lower end of Haven Street, um, and then that would make it four 30-minute parkings in a row. Um, we, me and Jean did go out there. We took a look, and that area of Haven Street is all more short-term. We think that that would help out a lot of businesses down that end, yeah, have more turnover. Um, so it would make sense. It's easier for us to also enforce if they're all together like that. Oh, okay. All right, questions from the board? Okay. okay. Um, another, and that's just showing you on the map where it is. Another, um, in both of these suggestions, the shorter term and the longer term have come out of our parking traffic study that um, was just prepared. There's one in 2009 and 2018. Um, and both recommended we do need to adjust and expand some of our time. So lowering in some areas, but expanding in others. So we've proposed that we expand uh, both municipal lots, the Brandy Court lot and the upper municipal lot, to a four hour parking um, limit. So going from two hours to four. Um, some as some business owners want shorter term to help them. There's other business owners in town that have asked us for longer term. Um, they feel their clients don't have enough time and they're getting tickets and then they're coming to us after mm. with some issues um, at the police station. Um, so that would be out of 1,400 spaces, this would give 164 four hour parking. Now 91 in the Brandy Court lot and 73 in the upper lot. Lieutenant, can you just show where that map is? Um, what, which ones we're talking about? Yes. So this is the um, the upper parking lot behind. This is CVS right here. So this lot here would all be uh, two hour regulation from eight to five. I'm sorry, go to four hours. And the Brandy Court lot uh, back here off of Brandy Court would go from two hours to four hours. So that's behind 30 Haven Street. 
Oh, okay. Um, okay. It's just easier for us if we keep them in the two parking lots to enforce as well, and I think it'll be easier for the public to understand these lots are four hour restrictions, um, as, and then everywhere else will remain two hours. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. So, um, somebody, you must have had enough questions around more time. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that? I mean, what was the, mm -hmm. what was the, what was the, what was the argument for more for more time in those that's, lots? That some of um, the customers that want to come to down here ready and want to get their hair done, and that takes two hours. Like this is just some examples I've heard. That takes two hours, and then now they can't go up to lunch because they've already used up their two-hour time limit. So I think that they've tried, asked if they you know want to shop around ready and go to lunch and do more downtown business area. And I don't know if Jean has anything she'd like to. Say about it as well. It, it did come up in the traffic. So, did we hear from a lot of businesses about this? Uh, so I've heard from yeah. several. Mm -hmm. I've heard from businesses also that they like. And then we, uh, just at the police station alone, we get walk ins every day that are complaining that they were just trying to take their uh, child to like the pediatrics down on 30 Haven Street, but then they also tried to grab lunch and they got a two hour ticket. So, we hear every day that there's not long enough sometimes. I'm just worried about, you know, so for example, in that. In that uh, brandy lot, I, um, I mean, I'm down there a lot. Yeah. Um, and about two thirty, from two thirty to six o'clock, it's a zoo. Right. Because you got kids, you know. Yeah. The there's a the the dentist the are there, karate's the there. There's a lot of things coming and going, mm -hmm. and I'm, you know, I'm just wondering that if we're trying to do a good deed, right, and, and then we're going to turn around and, tickets. you know, yeah. not let. Because how long are you in the karate store, or, you know, the shop, or how long are you in the dentist? I mean, I get that it's, you want to park and walk, and we're trying to create that culture of just was kind of wondering um, where we're going to end up if, you know, no good deed goes unpunished. Right. Thing, you know. Some of the, yeah. sorry, the no, some of the uh, people that come to us are people that have multiple kids that are doing multiple karate sessions in a row. Oh, okay. And they are there for over the two hours, and then at the two and a half to three and then getting a ticket and then the ones that have come into us and said is there any spots we can park longer term okay. or if they wanted to after have all the kids there then go to grab the bikes eat or something in that area they don't have to move the car and park well, yeah i'm not trying to make a case one way or the other i'm just kind of trying to understand yeah, I think that's what because we're i'll tell you what's going to happen well, you, yeah. you you all know this Somebody's calling you now because two hours wasn't enough. Yeah. The yeah, next thing that's going to happen hours. is yeah. somebody's not going to be happy because they yeah. can't get a spot because four hours yeah. is too long. So I want to be able to, when those, you know, when you have that conversation, I'd like to be able to explain why we got yeah. where we got. So. And it's a lot from the hair salons. Two hours is enough time. They actually get their time for the appointment and they're a little bit delayed and they're getting a lot done. The hair salons, the ones who are coming us to a slot too, yeah. saying, is there any way you can increase it to three or four. And that's why we thought the two lots, again, for us, we're also trying to make it not unrealistic for us to enforce. Right. Two lots make it easier, leaving everything else two hours in the designated 30 minutes. Got it. Question? Yeah, Barry. So um, it looks, I mean, I understand why you're trying to kind of chunk the four hour ones together. It's just easier to kind of, to kind of enforce. Um, what type of um, you know, communication you know, to the community are you going to put out there? So, for example, if you know you're going to be there for four hours, right, this is where you go, right? Don't go to in front of Pomplamoose and try to park there for four hours. You can park there. Like, it, like it, will our way, wayfinding kind of incorporate that into it? Because if people are going to want to stay and we are encouraging them to stay, we want them to start off in the right lot. And, and is there a plan for that or thought on how to do that yet? Or? I can jump in on that one. Um, what we're really trying to promote here is this idea that you would park once and you would patronize our downtown. And it, it, a lot of a lot of that discussion was back even in 2009, the idea of park once. Um, and as we see new development coming in, more restaurants, more um, choices for people to visit the downtown and stay for a while, we're trying to be proactive. Um, in addition to the feedback that we've gotten from the existing businesses to create this environment that will support what's happening, this trend of new businesses coming in. Um, so I think it's very important to, to um, also think about, at the same time, planning under the wayfinding program 
for messaging this. Right. If, if this is the direction the community wants to go in, um, we do have a wayfinding uh, program that we're in phase two of, um, and we do have um, a uh, downtown map that we've created. And um, through those tools and communication with the business community, um, we see an opportunity to, to get that message right. And I think we would need to change the sign to make sure it's all appropriate. Any questions from the public? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, so just to, uh, I'm Angelo, yeah. and I own Fresh and Clean, Dow and Lower Lo Lo Haven, and I've met with Gene, and we've met with the lieutenant. Uh, the dynamics of people parking there, and I see it every day, my own customers, like, geez, I come in, I got a circle around three times, I can't find parking, so short-term solution. That's what I, would help me, and a cost of the businesses there. But also, I think it's key that us, the businesses, also communicate with our customers. So if I know that uh, regulation is going to change, there's ready court is now four hours, then I could say to my customers, hey, listen, if you're grabbing a bunch of pop balloons or up the street, just make sure that you just pull out a 30 minute parking spot and please go park back here. Um, also, maybe communication on the signage. Instead of saying four hours, maybe you can say up to four hours two to four, just make it a little bit more flexible where someone is not gonna park there for four hours, which is, the way I look at it, it's half of the business day. Right. That's four hours. And what I've heard in the past was, a lot of people were parking there and using the train, and they were there all day. And so when you kind of sum it up, the dynamics of Lower Haven, what I could see over the past three years, is that those 30 spots, right where Rite Aid is and on the side of my street, those are very dynamic. Once you take them all out for a longer extended time, then that's when you have the issue. Yeah, and Apple News yeah. will suffer and all the other businesses. And I'm not just looking at for fresh and clean, but for my customers, which is you guys, the town. So if we create that flexibility and we also, as a business, promote that to our customers, I think that would work. So that's my comment, so thank you. So, so to clear, if I may yes. clarify, you like this current plan of having 30, 30 minute in front and four in hours. In addition back. of the additional 30 minute. Because originally when I was having a conversation with Gene, I was even thinking more express parking, where yeah. you could label it maximum 15 to 30 minutes, where you kind of flexible with someone. You're telling the customer, hey, listen, you can be here for 15, but no more than 30. Yeah. Because let's face it, even the gentleman who goes around and does the ticketing and does the parking management, yeah. it's hard for you to go around and be like, it might take you 45 minutes, it might take you an hour. And so when I'm at my store and I see my customer struggling to park, I know that there's a car in there for like 40 minutes. It's like, ah, I'm not benefiting from it. I mean, tomato's not benefiting from, you know, from, from it. Nick is not benefiting from it. Uh, so it's like we need to communicate to our customers from the business. So the more communication needs to go out to the businesses. Uh, incorporate wayfinding, more signage, be more specific. It's almost like, I hate to say this, but leading a baby somewhere. You gotta be really, really specific. Uh, so I think signage has a lot to do with it. But maybe <laughs> four hours, because once you see four hours, see you later. You park there, you stay there for four hours. But if you could maybe limit the amount of four hour spaces, even on a trial basis, uh, and then explicitly say up to, uh, just create some flexibility, that's all I'm saying. But an additional um, flexibility on short term, it's it's vital, uh, in my okay. opinion. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank I'll, you. I hope I answered your question. Uh, Bill. Yeah. Uh, how about the uh, wall breaches? That's a two hour limit. Would any thought to bring that up the floor also? Strike that. Yeah. Um, we didn't look at that just because there's really no businesses in the area that have asked us to check look into that plot at all really lately. So. Yeah, we can get the senior center or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, we usually have enough parking over there though, so it's not one that has come up yet yeah, for many I know a lot of you personnel pack there all day long. We're in a little bit of an overflow right now. Yeah. yeah. Mark. 
Thank you. Um, question on the uh, Lincoln Street. Yes. Two hour visitor is the, the goal. What are the regulations for residents? The same? It would two be hours. the same. It's two hours. It's two yeah. hours period. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then. Uh, Peter Sims, Sims Jewelers. Um, <clears throat> I was very involved in the uh, current parking plan that we have now that was um, done probably the late 1990s. Um, I'm curious if anybody in this room, with the exception of maybe Mr. Brown, knows why we made those lots to our limits the way they are. I didn't think so. The reason why we did that wasn't because of we had a problem with customers finding parking. The reason why we went to two hour all day parking was because of the people that worked in the buildings. Yeah. What used to happen before we had this in, was we had two hour parking. We had every two hours, people would be buildings, they could move their cars, we went to the space next to it. Two hours would pass, they could walk move their car again, put it in the spot next to it. It was the people that worked in the buildings that we were trying to get out of those lots. If you go to four hours, you are just going to bring that problem right back. All the part-time people that work in those buildings, work those 8 to 12 shifts, what's the parking got to work? 10 to 4 currently? 9 to 5. 9 to 5. 9 to 5. 9 to 5. Okay. So anybody who works at, from 8 to 12, they get free parking. Anybody that comes in at 1 or 2, they get free parking for the day. They're not going to park on spots you know, further away on the lot. It's human nature. Um, you know, you're just going to load up those lots with all their parkers again. People are going to be looking for spots, customers are going to be looking for spots. I had a customer come into my store today. She had done some business down on Lower Haven Street, got her nails done, whatever, came up town later in the day, was doing some business, she got ticketed. I don't understand why our parking enforcement guy has to ticket somebody like that. When we did the study back in the 1990s, we had an independent company come in, I'm sure pretty much the same, and the businesses although have obviously changed in that time, but the parking is pretty much the same. The parking we had back then is pretty much the parking we had now. Those guys knew within two weeks what cars they were targeting, what cars they were targeting, what cars were there all the time. They knew when a random car came in and was just happened to be there for a day, or maybe it was doing an extra or whatever. Um, I know what we have isn't perfect. I agree with this gentleman, the, you know, the, the dynamics down there have changed, they need some, some quicker turnaround time. Um, but you make those lots four hours, that's going to be a disaster. Complete disaster. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Tim Kerr, one hand still I have. Uh, just a quick question on the fire radius question earlier on the first yep. uh, slide. Is there a condition change there now, or are the fire engines bigger than they used to be? Yet? Fire engines always just pick that turn on suspension. No one used to park there before. There was um, a new fitness studio. So that's really what the change has been that we've seen. I mean, obviously, you have to keep the ladies, but. Yeah. Um, public, any more public comment? Oh, yeah, yeah. How about you? Can they? Can those two lots be some four hours? Is that too hard to enforce? Some four hours? Yeah, it's really hour? tough. No, yeah, especially the signage coming into the lot. You really have to keep it all the same. The whole row can't yeah. be four hours. The problem is, if you stop putting individual signs up at individual spots, then now we're making it almost impossible for the DPW to clear the lot because now they have to go around the signs. If they start making signs, hitting signs, knocking them down, the lots are not going to be as clear. So it's it, it's signed. It's just easier to have a whole lot signed. And individual rows and like stuck going on the outskirts only. But again, our concern is with the DPW snow clearing. We want to make it as easy for them as possible and fast as possible and not, not a hindrance. Okay, thank you for your comments. I will now um, close the public hearing. I have a motion. Um, so moved. Yeah. I uh, move for closed hearing on parking, traffic, transportation, task force safety improvements. Thank you. Second. Sir. Second. All in favor? Next time I will try not to step on your toes. Um, so. I have a question. You have a question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, are we in the discussion? Questions well, are. I think uh, typically someone makes a motion to accept the, um, the changes and um, then we move into discussion. 
Um, I have motion. Okay. Um, I have. There are numerous yeah. motions. Yep. There are five. Is it because Brandy and Upper Municipal are being treated differently? Uh, no, it's because we don't have a parking regulation for four hours, so you'd have to enact that mm. first, and yeah. then. Okay. So I'm just going to read them as stated. Um, move that the board approve safety amendments. 2019 02, 2019 03, 2019 04, 2019 05, 2019 06, as presented. Second. Okay, I'll open the discussion. We Right now it's a package. If people are uncomfortable with parts of the package, I'm happy to break things out. Um, and discuss them, you know, vote on them separately if you'd like. Yes, Barry. So, I mean, I, I really like the idea of, of expanding the number of four-hour spots because we're encouraging people to park and stay and walk around. I guess um, I'm a little sensitive to, to Mr. Sims's comment is that a lot of those, I mean, the one by Brandy Court is really... I mean, that's kind of off the beaten path a little bit. I mean, you can park there and, and walk around the whole downtown. If you have those four-hour spots kind of where the, you know, the, the middle where a lot of the stores are, um, I think, you know, we may wind up doing a little bit more harm. It, you know, is there any, are there any other spots more on the periphery that we can do the four-hour with um, and keeping the ones that are kind of more in the middle um, lower? Before they answer that, can I chime in to add to your question? Go ahead. Um, I know we've been having conversations about employee parking more generally. Um, is there consideration for looking at the map differently to help to encourage employees to park a little further out to make it the center of town and Haven Street more appealing? So before we start looking at um, so, and that's in relation to Mr. Sims' question. Sorry, that was a little clunky, but Gene, you and I talked about it. <laughs> yes, it, at, adding more employee parking in the downtown is definitely um, something that we saw in the parking study and something we're working on. So would we burn a couple of houses now? I mean, how oh, can we do yes. this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, I, there's a finite number of spaces. What John means to say. <laughs> I, so here's the concern I have. John, what are you going to do here? When we have a, when we do something, look, Sorry. I understand that we've got to try some things and we've got to be responsive. I, I clearly understand that in this spot, I understand the Linden thing, no questions about it. I mean, I'm in that part of town a lot and I could see that being a real problem when you try to wheel around the corner. I was present in the Masonic building when it was a fire mm -hmm. um, and I get it. Um, so they had to get people moving cars, you know, to, to um, and I and I really understand those short term adding those short terms at the other end. That makes all the sense. I'm a little worried about the permanence. I mean, Peter, you talk about and I remember when you did that study in the late 90s. Um, and that was 20 years ago. And we haven't changed anything in 20 years. I'm a little worried about changing this thing with it, it, and the only way you're going to, if it's not working. I mean, is there a way for us to, you know, do a, like a, a probationary period to see if what Peter says is going to come true comes true? Because that's a different problem. You know, and if it suddenly turns into a parking lot for everybody that's a part-time worker, you know, um, downtown, it changes the dynamic of people being able to come down. There. What what you're trying to accomplish gets defeated. I guess is what I'm saying. I mean, does it make sense to um, to think about it on a, on a probationary basis? I I don't know. I mean. I'm not stuck in the mud to do something the way we've always done it because we've always done it that way. I, I really don't think that's smart. But I also think that we've kind of got a balance. You know, there are enough places to park. You just got to know where they are. And, and you got to be able to, you know, adjust your thinking to, you know, walk in two blocks instead of 20 feet. I mean, I get that too. Are we, are we creating a monster? 
um, by doing this with permanence? Uh, it's a question, not a statement. Bob? Uh, you mentioned burning houses down, and then you were at a place where there was a fire. We'll talk later. A lot of campfire stuff when I was a kid. I want to make sure. A lot of Boy Scout camp. Um, one of the things we talked about with wayfinding, especially, was getting a jump on all the four-yard development. Yeah. So I understand all the all the issues you're talking about, but also try to envision what the downtown may look like in three years. Um, and you don't really want to wait for three years to start thinking about, well, what should we do with the parking? Um, there's a lot more spaces not in these lots that are still downtown spaces than are in these lots. And that's the balancing act. So if you're going to put 10 or I'm 15... I'm sorry, Bob. Could you just repeat? There's that? a lot more spaces in the downtown that will remain two hour than are yeah. going to change to four hour. Okay. So if you have some mathematical equation and you say, well, you know, some percent we want 30 minutes, some percent we want four hour, most right. of them we want two hour. We can all probably generally agree within rough parameters of that. Then the real question is where? Where are the four hours? Where are the 30 minutes? The 30 minutes seem to be business oriented, mm -hmm. which is a little dangerous because businesses change. Um, that's okay, you, you may change the 30 minute. But it's really difficult to visualize and to wayfind your way to four hour parking that might be in several locations yeah. and the same percent of spaces would be dealt with. That's why the lots are visually the easiest thing by far. Everyone can be trained into the four hours. I'm not saying there won't be unintended consequences. You may have to react to that. But if you're if you're in agreement that some percent of the spots should be four hour, I think this is very much the easiest way to do it. Uh, have we given yes, any? Sorry, thank you. Um, have we given any consideration to putting up a sign that says "No employee parking"? There are lots. I mean, how, I'm not how saying that's know, how the they know? way to. Yeah. Like deterrent, stickers. not necessarily enforcement related. Um, and this is where my question about what the long-term employee parking yeah. um, research or study is going towards because I think Mr. Sims brings up an excellent point, which is we already have employees parking there mm -hmm. that need to park some downtown. Or if they take up all the four-hour parking spot, it to John's point, it defeats the purpose. So can we put them somewhere else sooner rather than later? Bob? Yeah, also keep in mind that the, whether it's the two hour or the four hour, um, that is a limit in the downtown area. So to the earlier point, someone was in this section, then they moved to that section, they got a ticket. That's because that's what the law is right now, is two hours total. So it's going to be four hours total. If employees move from a four hour lot to another lot, as long as they're working more than four hours, they'll get a ticket. If they are part-timers and they will work less than four hours, it's possible to get away with it. The other businesses should, should use So you're saying that you move from spot to spot? Yes. You're still taking that? Yes. Yeah, yeah you can't. Yeah, so that doesn't really work. That's one of the big complaints from the businesses, which is that all well, their full-time employees right. get hit as they move around town. Sources and methods. Yeah. Because Peter's right, um, employees used to just trade groups <coughs> of keys and go move cars two or three spaces every two hours. Hear you. And so years ago, it was decided, well, that's not really the objection or objective of two-hour parking. It's two hours total in this area. Well, does that solve the problem that Peter brings up? Um, not for part-timers. If, if someone is working a three- or four-hour shift and, not, and nothing else oh, I see. Uh, influences it, <laughs> yeah, they could park in those lots. But in theory, if they're working an eight-hour day and they're in the area for more than you know, four hours, they will get a What do they do today? Say again? What, what, what do employees, where do they park now? There's employee parking. We sell different stickers for that. There's, there's what do they do? I don't know, but I know what we make available. I, I, I know that I've talked to some of the businesses. I know there's not enough. <laughs> um, yeah, there may need to be more. Yeah. And yeah, so, when we get overcalled, I just try to send them to the outskirts and even park on Union Street or anywhere I know that they can park all day. So yeah. we, we encourage businesses to never park, take up their customers' spaces, but whether they do it or not. Hmm. So well, is there... Sorry, is, to, to my original question, Yes. is there an idea of a timeline for when we can expect more information on the consideration of employee parking? My sense was it's an iterative process and you do changes a little bit at a time and see what the reactions are. Um, and 
and that's a more effective and less dramatic way of just doing everything at once. Okay. You know, we keep poking things around, see what happens, see what you need. Um, we had a problem maybe two, three years ago where a couple of businesses were buying up significant amounts of the employee parking and not using them. Mm. Um, so eventually after a few years, I mean, we were still collecting the revenue we were going to collect, but it wasn't an efficient use of those spaces. Okay. There was someone buying spaces just in case they needed them because they were too cheap. Um, you know, the police stopped <coughs> allocating them the way they used to be, which was first come, first serve. And, you know, you had to show you you were using them. So, you know, we have to learn. We have to go through things and learn. Um, you know, you can raise the price to something so high, but then the employee's just going to park in neighborhoods, and you right. don't want that either. Right. So I this, suggest this is you a problem that's never going to be fully fixed. Right. I suggest you, like airlines, you just oversell the number of tickets. We actually do. We do, yeah. Oh, you do? There's, some, there's certain ones you can buy and have a reservation. There's others that you, we do oversell. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, Gene, Bob, any of the officers, the types of businesses in that area and their employees are, are currently are they um, mostly eight hour a day employees that type of thing or I understand that it's just right now um, or are there some that have part-time employees that that may do uh, what this uh, Mr. Simmons, Simmons. Sims. 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 Um, that may do what Mr. Sims does, or suggested, if they're only working part time, three or four hours, might they take up those spots? So, just could I get a feel of the types of businesses and employees that we have in that area? We certainly can't know from the uh, spots that we are, the stickers that we sell. Yeah. We don't know what businesses are buying them and how they use their employees. So, can I suggest that, because we still have one more hearing on agenda, can yeah. I suggest that... Two. <laughs> oh, two. Okay, um, that we perhaps put the employee parking up for discussion at a future agenda, assuming there's something specific to dis for us to discuss as far as supporting that effort, um, and continue with the rest of these. Uh, I, I, I agree. I think... Um, we have to we have to be business friendly, small business friendly. We need to make sure that their employees have places to park, um, and that will hopefully prevent this four, new, these new four hour lots from becoming uh, employee parking lots to some extent, um, and encourage what we're trying to encourage, which is uh, people to park there for four hours and, and walk around town and shop. And, and as John said, there's going to be more, more shops coming. So, so I, I'm I'm in favor of that. Yeah. So what are we are we are we delaying making a decision on this, or is that what you're suggesting, or are we going to vote on it and at the same t time simultaneously seek to find more employee parking? I think the latter. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I, I would agree. It, it's okay. going to take I mean, a little time you know, to put it into place, and in that time. Right. Two okay. things and can you, happen. Are, you would want would not want to hold say the grand court thing hostage. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, right. I agree. Right. All right. Okay. So All right. I've I'm good. made the motion. Any other discussion it's among been the board? Seconded. Is good? Yep. Okay. Um, so taking these all as a block? Yes. E e I yes. read the motion yes. uh, with all. It, it, I, I, so as I said at the beginning, Fine. if you want to separate out, and we can, but it doesn't sound like no. we need to. So um, all. So with no further discussion, um, all in favor of these Great. changes? Five zero. Thank you. <coughs> all right. Um, I do think we need to get this back on the agenda, and we got to really sit and yeah. roll up our sleeves and try to figure something out. Yeah. So that Peter's prophecy doesn't come true, because yeah. I, under, I do understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So yep. So we have three members that are are committed to that right now, Barry. Um, yeah, I'm sure we agree. Am I one of the three? <laughs> <laughs> well, John, John, said he was, John said he was on board with oh, okay. Vanessa did, so I am. Oh, okay. You right. were too. Right. Thank you. Um, I am. Not to be presumptuous, but. Um, so. Uh, yeah. Right. 
I think we're going to um, skip and get and, and finish open and then postpone the hearing on the new poll on uh, at Franklin Grove Street right now. Okay, I'll move to take that out of order. Uh, thank you. Second. Call for the vote. I mean, it was, yeah. We got a vote. We'll get a vote. All, All in favor, See? taking it out of order. Comes in handy. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Um, All right. Uh, I learned. Ah. All right. Are we doing the poll or are we the polls? Polls. So, polls. So, so, it, but we have to open it and continue yeah. it. So, oh, I see. I right. You can do that. So, shut we, we, we just voted to. So, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yep. move fast. Okay. Uh, to the inhabitants of the town of Reddick, please take notice that the select board of the town of Reddick will hold a public hearing on March 26, 2019 at 8.30 p.m. in the select board's meeting room, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on a request from RMLD to install a new poll, number one, on Franklin Street, located at the intersection of Grove and Franklin Streets, to alleviate the existing load of poll number 36 on Grove Street. A copy of the proposed document regarding this topic will be available in the select board packet made public on Thursday, March 21st, 2019 on the town website. All interested parties are invited to attend the hearing or may submit their comments in writing or by email prior to 4 p.m. on March 26, 2019 by order of the town manager. Dan. Uh, Bob, if we continue, uh, what's a good date and time? Uh, May 7th, 8 p.m. I think. Is that what I wrote, Andy? Uh, move to continue this hearing till May 7th at 8 p.m. Second. Is that what I wrote down? Yeah, that's okay. what you wrote down. Okay. Um, Thank you. All in favor? Could I ask for a three to four minute break before we go on? Yes. Okay. Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Yeah. Barry totally stole my question. Oh. <laughs> hmm. I would love to do nothing but. Okay. So, sort of. You just get cookie crumbs. Yeah. These just all the safety amendments yeah, that's you approach. That's which is why I want to get the side which is John Hancock. These are all the safety amendments. You just approved. You have to sign each and every one. So we make it sound like it's punishment. Yeah. I didn't mean to change. I could have kept going. I just, that was quick. Good question. Yeah. Seeing what that chair felt like. Yeah. Someday. <laughs> I didn't get a sense of it was oh. and Vanessa, what happens is businesses buy up the employee parking and don't use it. Well, that's got to stop. We don't quite know how to do that, other than keeping track. You, you limit the number, you know, you have to. Yeah, we, that's, we have that's, cut back. That's tough for places like salons that might have two different employees, but not have 10 people in the business at one time, so that they need to have different houses for each of the employees. Yeah, it's it's a vexing problem. It is like, I think you should have, so for example. It's a, it's a chess game, as you said about Dan. Downtown parking always is. Maybe what you do is you assign spots. So if I've got 10 employees, but I never need more than four at, yeah. a, time. at a time, I get four spots. Right. And okay. 10 tags. And I can give the tags out to my 10 employees. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, who could park there. I mean, I, you know, that seems like it might work. I think there's a version of that. And I gotta, well, there's a way to work around that. Um, and, you know, trust me, our enforcement officer has no problem enforcing that. Yeah, exactly. He's uh, like very good. strong. Good. I think we're in good shape. <laughs> he is very strong. Um, but I, I didn't that's yes, why yes. you know the idea we're, of we're going to get this stuff done for the end. farther away where they won't yeah. get tickets but can oh. stay there yeah. all day. We're all here. Spots. Folks, finding those spots is a challenge. 
All right. Right. So oh. let's move on to our last hearing of the evening. Uh, okay, hold on. So, fine. Nope, that's already, uh, you just have to say, right? Open yeah. it up again. Um, so we are now going to continue the hearing on changes to the select board policies. Huh. And again, um, thank you. This, this this hearing will be cut, conducted slightly differently. It won't be conducted by the chair, but I am um, I've asked Dan to conduct the hearing. Go, gonna go out with a bang here. Yes. All right. Uh, you all should have received a uh, brand new marked up copy. Uh, we are at the point in the hearing where uh, the hearing is still open. Uh, I went through an explanation at, at a top level of what we had done in both yep. articles one and two. So what I would like to do under this comment period from the board is look up, look this over. There have been some changes since the last one went out on Thursday. Yeah. Many of your comments have been incorporated and some other oh, oh, yes, material has been added. So it's Dan, now it's in here? Correct. Yes. Dan, yeah. To interject, um, yep. I don't remember asking for public comment. We're getting to that. We're getting to that. Okay. Yeah. They'll come after we do this. Okay. Thank you, though. So I want to make sure that you had a chance to look at your comment. I don't think it's necessary to go over every one of them. They're pretty self-explanatory. I'd rather you save that detail for any changes we're going to make later. And uh, honestly, looking this over, I see a whole slew of friendly amendments that can clean most of this up. So I, I think we're going to be in good shape here. So I'll give you a few minutes if you have not had a chance to look over the comments. If I can just make a comment. That yeah, do you want to highlight anything? About not, not so much as okay. just the fact that when I added more comments today that I received over the weekend, it, it renumbers all. Oh, the no, yeah, so the numbers will be so different, but the comments. If you had a number in mind before, yeah. you have to oh, find no. it all over again. But the, na the, names, are, the names are the same, yeah. F and B and uh, right. RM. So, so I just have a procedural question. Yeah. Um, I was under the impression that we were to kind of do this um, in time for it to be released in the packet on Thursday. I didn't know that we had a chance to go back, go back and make further comments. So I guess stuff came in after that. Uh, I certainly a I, I sent a couple items in today because uh, okay. I finally got a chance to go through it in detail okay. and respond to some of them. Uh, and again, I, I paid some heed to your comments about we should try to make the packet as complete as we can by right. Thursday. And there's verbiage I'm going to suggest for okay. that. Yeah. So, uh, if you have any comments, let's go through Article 1 first. Anything to add to what's in here? Uh, that's what I'd be looking for. Uh, and uh, if, or if you want to just highlight maybe some, some of the new things you put in since the packet. Well, why don't I do that? Um, maybe that's under, the best thing. Under okay. what is common, RL, <coughs> RL4. Yep. Uh, over the weekend, Andy, um, Andy Town Council and I went back and forth a little bit. Mm -hmm. And his last, most recent comment was during, uh, you see it right here behind me, during meetings, members of the select board shall respect the state ethics law and political finance parentheses law question um, was his comment. So <clears throat> town council um, agreed that, first of all, there's no legal reason why you have to add things like that to a policy. Yeah. Um, you're supposed to follow all the laws all the time, in theory. Um, and that referencing a specific statute and not the others does not have any legal significance, but it could give an implication that these laws or statutes are more important than ones we're not mentioning. Mm -hmm. uh, and he said if there is a political reason, it's because there's no legal reason, if there's a political reason to include them anyway, um, he had no strong objection to that other than just to <coughs> note it might cause trouble in the future, yeah. as he put it. It, it. it assumes that people aren't doing it. Yeah, which they, no. they've taken an oath to uh, right. uphold the right. laws in the Constitution. I think, mm, okay, so I think I've raised this with my comment, which is in F2. It had to do with political speech, I guess. Right. Broadly. Right. So, um, which was F, if so, a comment F2, general, we should add something to the effect of select board and comments cannot make election related comments during open session. Um, where I was going with that is that um, no incumbents should make campaign specific comments. That they're up I guess that would beg for some further definition, and that's what I think that's where Ray is going. That so, and that's why I, I think campaign as opposed to election, because it would be perfectly fine to remind viewers um, or our always packed house 
that the election is coming up on April 2nd. It's a very different thing to say I'm up for re-election because that's a violation of, of um, ethics law. So that's where I was going with that, that there should be essentially no stumping from the days. Which is a law already, right. and I agree right. with Ray's um, point. The, the, I think <coughs> I, I think Vanessa's intention here was to remind board members to stay out of that quagmire. But um, I mean, if if Ray is saying it's already a law, so therefore it doesn't have to be a policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Maybe that's something. Um, Maybe that goes in the onboarding. Yes. In the yeah, onboarding. yeah. I think that's. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Great. Um, then Andy's next comment, RL5. Yes. Um, the select board shall schedule a meeting after the town election and prior to the opening of the annual town meeting. I, I actually like that. I was going to be prepared to offer that as a friendly amendment to replace okay. the first paragraph. And then during the yeah. during this meeting, the board shall reorganize mm -hmm. or elect officers. Yes. I think that's great. That addresses and then my that, concerns. That, that gets the liaison delay. Uh, delay yeah. in the well, yeah, the thing is, is that is that this <coughs> was um, I think I don't know if it was last year too. But um, this year, I mean, it's almost a month between the time you, the election. You called a meeting right after the election I, to. Yeah. yeah I, I, thought, I think I'll reelect the officers below you. Was it? You I were think acting so. chair. Yeah. I mean, you had to replace. But I think this was a weird year because I mean, normally <coughs> we meet every two weeks, but this you know, well, sort of this is only a weird year because the town first night of town meeting is before the first regularly yeah. scheduled meeting. Right. That's okay. not usual. Well, I think you guys are under some discussion to meet possibly on the 16th to uh, uh, the 11th. That I've heard. I mean, the 11th. Uh, the, we are meeting. Well, you're meeting on the 11th. Right? Did but you not John can't make it. Yeah, I, I do have a suggestion that, you know, yeah. but I think we're it's premature at this time. Yeah. You know, but I do think that there's a date that we really need to have a single agenda item for reorganization. If everything is here, yes, follows follows track. Um, the only time we would have to give adequate time for new and old uh, chairs to collaborate on a town state of the town mm -hmm. would be that interim period. Yeah. It, however, you know when that date of the eleventh came up. Two months ago, right. I was very clear to the whole board that I was going to be out of date. Oh, okay. okay, and right. so I, I don't really think we can reorganize without a full board. No, no I, I, I agree. just think we have to I do agree. that. Right. And, and I, you know, this is delayed, just totally on a lot of that stuff last year when, when I think it was one time Vanessa couldn't come, one time you right. couldn't come. And yeah. 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 So what I what I was going to suggest is that should this flow follow the way that we've laid it out, that we have a one agenda item on Tuesday the 16th of April. I just picked it because it was a Tuesday. Um, and um, it gives us plenty of time to post. Should there be an extremely tight election, it gives us plenty of time to certify. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just, a, it, it kind of, you know, it trips all the things <laughs> to keep them out of the way so that you can have a reorg if yep. this pattern is followed as laid out here. Okay. So, you know, that kind of satisfies the, yeah. you know, the open meeting. <laughs> can, um, can we, um, John, yes. so we'll, let me pull up my calendar. Can we, I mean, we'll have to wait till after. Uh, mm -hmm. right. So well, well, if we post it now, whoever gets elected will understand that that, uh, uh, you know, that's a, a time we're going to meet and reorganize. I, I would suggest you guys take that under advisement. You can communicate among yourselves, but the date's out there. Check your calendars. We, we are kind of ticking down here. I, okay. And I would okay. suggest Got that. it. Oh, Bob, sorry. Yeah, I'm Bob. Yeah. I've just called up what looks like a complicated agenda for the 23rd, um, which is when you have been planning to meet. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't see any reason you couldn't just move that meeting to the 16th. Mm -hmm. Knock email, it out altogether. Your email over the weekend from Reading Little League was the only yeah. one that seems to be planning on coming that night for yeah. sure. Yeah. Now, the Board of Health, it still depends on when they move the pesticides forward. Mm -hmm. I just figured a new board would want to meet with the town accountant. Okay. So, All right. Trust yeah. me, the Little League will want to meet sooner. If they can okay. get a sorry date, sure. they're going to be thrilled. Can we continue with this? Um, yeah, so we can. Um, okay, I, I believe that handles Vanessa's comment. It F6. does. Thank you. I'm free on the 12th, or the 16th. Okay. I am as well. Yeah, me too. Very good. Yeah, good. Solved. Good. We're can open. we also confirm that with all five candidates? 
Four. Oh, good idea. <laughs> because of the two that are we've here. got two in here. Well, we have Six three. Of, we have three of them here. Oh, that's true. Well, yeah. Yeah. one has said yes. Yeah. All right. Lizzie Chopper. Yes. All right, we've got two. Three out All right. Five. There we go. Bob, could I ask I'll you to ask reach you out to the other table? <laughs> Thank you. Um, on the bottom of page one dash one. Um, yep. There was another new comment from Andy to replace bullet point four under one point one oh, point two, yeah. and to replace it with. Uh, I won't read it, but you can see it. Yeah, I like that. Um, okay. Doing so the liaisons at the first meeting also. I think that's great. And so, is there, is there anything new on this page that anyone wants to add? I, was, I, I think we have the material we'll need yep. to do the amending when we. Get yes. Yep. Okay. I, I would like to. Um, I'm fl I, I flip flopped on this. Oh, you did. And I, I this is our own line? No, no, this is the reorg, whether to have the reorg. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Go I ahead. originally was opposed to it because we just voted on it. Um, right. So I, I, I want people to understand I flip flopped for a reason. I, I got more information, and this is what most towns do, and there's a, a number of reasons why it's a good idea. So We, we had left it at uh, June, which we were not honoring in the right. previous six years. Then we tried. April and now we're going to formalize it in April. Right. I, I'm sorry, we, we tried June, really obeying the policy. Yeah. And now we're going to go do it in April. Right. So that, that's how we went. But I, I, I just wanted to explain Thank you. to everybody that I originally posed yeah. it, but I, I rethought. Okay, that, uh, okay. That's a selfless. Uh, so uh, I, I have a question on RL9. Um, mm -hmm. So. Am I, I? I don't know, Andy. Am I reading this right? Um, so the board shall assign. Okay. Um, so the board shall assign liaisons during the first meeting following the election. <coughs> yeah. That's also when we're going to reorganize. Yes. Um, so mm -hmm. if you have new members that are going to come on, how are they expected to put their? Um, I, it'd just be up to me to ask them, just like I have to ask you after tonight yeah. and before your next meeting. No, but she can put out a question there as right after the election, tell the new people and the old people. Okay. Have it ready for your first meeting. Well, I mean, it, Barry does bring up a point that, you know, I mean, you could do it by polling that, that's okay, yeah. in advance. The other thing you mm -hmm. can do is once you reorg, when you do it at the next available you know, meeting, yeah. which you right. theoretically would be two weeks later. Well, we, don't wanna, we don't want to leave um, it liaison spots uncovered unnecessarily my thought and I, I forget whether I put it in here or not but my thought was to take the chair out of the equation for recommending liaisons and my thoughts are twofold and I'll be quick Dan um, one is we just Bob sends out a sheet of all the liaison assignments and we pri we each one of us just goes through them quickly and prioritizes he, he compiles them um, and then based on that we have a discussion whereas if you if the board nominates someone then um, it's it's difficult to argue that well Vanessa yeah. got that I really want that and, yeah, yeah. and then you start you know it's so my suggestion would be change uh, the, the verbiage the first meeting following the election to a meeting in April kind of tracking the original language we had in here it doesn't have to be the first meeting just as long as it happens in April right. to the assignment I mean, the whole point of reorganizing in April is You're so that we can get the liaison up and running then it, that's the meeting yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but in, in your case, if you meet on the 16th, well, you're not going to meet on the 23rd. Now. Okay. Yeah. So, can I also recommend that since this is um, technically in the section under chair, that we move it elsewhere? Uh, under the what? Yes, we so have to move it elsewhere. Yeah, I don't know where elsewhere. Uh, duties of the board, probably. Uh, so, are we? Are we? Oh, right. Hold on. Hold on. Let me address that. Uh, or that. Uh, so you're taking it out of the chair's hands. Well, right. Yes. It's, yeah. So the chair no longer nominates? No. no. It's just a straight, no dis for it. straight discussion on open discussion one, about priorities. One, two, point Bob nine. Nine. Dan, after one, what happens if... Oh, yeah, one, two, nine. Yeah. Then it's a discussion. Then it's a discussion among the whole board. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I don't see why the chair needs to yep, have that. That's fine. Uh, the other thing, uh, I read ahead and under... <laughs> we're... we're uh, I'm going to want to take out number six there because that's going to now be a responsibility of the board. Say Prepar that again, Preparing and delivering the annual state of the town address, there was one suggestion that that.
be put under the duties of the board and be a shared responsibility. Yeah, that so that should be taken out of the section 112? Yes. So I'm going to recommend, and I'm not doing it now, so but we'll do all this together. It'll, it'll hang together, I think, yeah, when we do it. So that would strike number um, six. six, Bob. And it'll be dealt with later. Okay, anything else on 11 uh, one through 114? 111 through 114? Well, there's um, an issue about nominating and assigning. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with that. Nominating is fine on number three. Yeah, uh, the, 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 here's the confusion on that. Um, Everybody agrees. <laughs> no, no okay. you mean nominate? It was left as nominating, um, right? No, I no, it was changed to assign. It, it was changed to assign. Everyone's fine with that's that? because it just functions. I think you said yes. it was a, yeah. Yes, yes. Wait, okay. Wait, hold on. Is the word currently assign or is our. It, it, as recommended, it's assign. And that's just for uh, functions like m Memorial Day speech or you're going to go to this banquet, right? So I don't think that has to have board consensus. So maybe a sign is okay there. But I think we change it to nominate from a sign in four and five. Yeah. Because yeah. it's yeah. Because that should be a board decision. Well I mean I, I don't know. I, what I, happens if the chair wants to sign his or or herself and there may be someone else that's interested, it should be up for I, if we're discussing. I'm okay with nominate. Easy. Nominate in all three of them, three, four, I, and five. I would prefer nominate yeah. for that's number fine. three. Yep. So back to this wording in RL9. Do you want to say a meeting in April? Or do you want to say the first meeting? I mean, we're not really amending yet, but. I think it should be the first meeting. I, I think so. Okay, too. all right, we'll leave that for now. Um, so let me just get this clear. So number three would be nominate. Yes. And the only downside to that is if something comes up between board meetings and you need to uh, have a have a member or two members go. Yeah, let's who, not who decides over that? Let's not overthink it. Okay, yeah. that's why you're the town manager. That's that's why you're yeah. manager. <laughs> so nominate board members for and annual liaison. And that's been struck, correct? Yes. Number, number four? Is four has not been struck. The word assigned has been in three. Yeah. Four right. is the same, five four is the five same, five six is same. struck. And comment RL9 is going to be inserted where? Uh, oh, remove number four and replace. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so number four will be okay. deleted. Yeah. We'll, and then we'll form so, deal with that. So basically, we're agreeing that the chair no longer will um, nominate <coughs> liaisons. That's a big shift from what we we've done. Isn't that what it's, that, that, right? That's not my understanding. Is he striking yeah, I mean, number RL4? line says that the board shall assign liaisons, not that the chair nominates them. Yeah. Well, and the board always assigns the chair nominates. Oh, I, right. I didn't mean to but see that why does the, I mean, if, if we're doing this as town manager sends out a sheet, five members respond back with their preferences the board then has a discussion the nomination process for that there's no need for the chair to nominate that the reason this is that that's true the, okay. has been stated this right. way is because the chair previously assigned people to certain roles and then the board discussed this time i think it makes it more of a board I, decision i kind of want a human in the loop there because there, there could be some subjective decisions right. uh, that aren't going to fall out of a straight prioritization. What if there's ties? Well, then you might want to consider the preference. You know, but the then individual. it's a board discussion. Well, basically, the, the, what happened is that the way it the way it worked in the past, every put in their submissions initially came to the chair. We can't do that anymore. It goes to a third party, then goes to the chair who nominates, and then the board votes. So the chair isn't assigning. It's still a board decision. Well, I guess it's just that I mean, this Bob could handle. I mean, I, I I put it in the spreadsheet along with you know ones, twos, and threes, and I managed to give everybody ones and twos and no threes. So. I was happy with that one. But you can do that. But that's a new process. That hasn't right. always been the case. Every chair did it differently. Yeah. Uh, that's exactly the way I did it when I was chair. Yeah. Yeah. But again, I mean, not every got chair. chair. Everybody so, got their ones. But then, somebody has to do it. If it's him, that's Well, fine. right. So, I mean, either way, it has to be Bob now because... That, that's just the analytic. I mean, right, right. Not. That's just the data part of it. But the nomination portion is a little bit different <coughs> because it does give that power to the chair as opposed to the board. And I think the, the weakness with having, there's two problems with having the chair doing it, as I mentioned. The first one is that if, the, if I 
nominate Vanessa for X, Y, X, and Y, or something like that, and 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 one of you would like to do that, it, it, you have to say, I'd be better at this than Vanessa, and go against the chair's uh, recommendation. And I think that creates that can create an uncomfortable uh, atmosphere. And I think the other thing, the, the other reason is. Um, and, and if we re now that we're going to reorg, I won't have to do this. But I, I would be uncomfortable uh, looking at ties that Bob gives me, and then picking one person over the other. Um, yeah, it's still going to be discussed, and it, people it, can I, but I, agree I, amongst themselves. I, I, I mean, yeah, I but just, there's a difference why, between why have the fighting. Chair involved? Right. It's almost unnecessary work for the chair since the discussion has to take place anyway, and it makes it such that you have to argue against someone else. You're essentially now, instead of having a simple conversation between two peers, one person is given priority. All right, so I think it, yes, Dan. Or, 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 or Bob. Can we Dan's agree on right, something? Yeah, yes. Move on. Right, yes, I, I think Dan, uh, Bob wanted to say something. Um, are you asking the town manager to gather and present data or to make suggestions? No, to gather and present the the rankings of how they, you know, how they come out. Is that, I mean, obviously the two tasks are quite different, but. Yes. It's going to take you a long time in open session to figure this out. Right. I think it is. That's my I've concern. worked with six or eight chairs over yeah. the last 10 years in this job and the prior one. Yeah. And it's back and forth. It's a lot of back and forth. Well, maybe if this one did this and then this yeah. one could do yeah. this. And I'm not saying yeah, it's be you. transparent. I'm just saying it's very cumbersome. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, is the, is the process I think broken? you should see all the data. The question is whether you wanted me to try to take it another step further. I'm not anxious to do it, but I think I'd save you time. Right. We did. We actually did. Uh, um, I mean, the time that I did it, the data was all in one place, right? right? And that was done, um, so and that got see. out to everybody That's in the packet. That's always the case. Yep. Yeah. So everybody knew kind of what that was, and it went back and forth. And it, I mean, some things got changed. So someone says, "I really want to do that," and someone says, "Oh, you know what? You can do it." And, and it, it did, yeah. to your to your point, get. Resolved, but there was somebody just kind of starting the right. discussion and, point. And if it's helpful, I could, for instance, call up Barry and say, "Look, you've put in for these three. Yeah. Which one do you really want?" Because right. without that person doing that job, whether it's the chair or me or someone else, somebody else, just going to be a longer discussion. Okay. Yeah. So, so why, the, what I was thinking is, how many liaison assignments are there? Thirty-five. Or Thirty-five. Right. And sometimes so, we're, we're, we're assigning two people yeah. to right. Uh, right. Well, we have to make that clear ahead. Right. Well, but but um, I think that so you number you, you get the sheet and you pick one through you 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 have to choose one through four list them one through thirty five maybe and, I'm and when you weighted voting oh. and when you put <laughs> when you put all that together um, I I think yeah if you don't just do one two three no you can't do one right. two three. Um, right, you, so you, you just do one through thirty-five, and, okay. and I, I can almost guarantee you that um, it, it should come out pretty. Are, uh, are we okay with the wording on RL nine? You, you guys can hash this. I, I would like to strike yeah. number four and replace it with RL nine in a different okay. section. Oh, in a different section. Yeah. Well, because it, it no longer it's falls board, under the it's chair. It's a board. Okay. Yeah, yeah. it would be a board. Right. All right. Well, look. I mean, that's a that's a that's a it's a new section. The policy shift. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we will do effectuate that when we get to the vote. Okay. All right. Um, on page one dash two. Anything to add there? I think that was uh, the same as the old comments. Um, yeah, I, I checked it. It is. Uh, let's see. I, I was okay with. Uh, oh, did we go? Like, we there were no new comments. Right. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, wait. Which one are you on now? One point I'm, I'm on one one four. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. And it's page one two. Oh, one. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. It wasn't clear on that. Uh, the first comment. It must be there. It's B seven. It's B ten now. <coughs> so uh, I'm okay with that. This um, liaison shell. On number four. Um, talk no, it's a secretary responding. <coughs> it's Pardon a comment me? under one one four. We're, we're here. 
I might have put this under the wrong section. But <laughs> the idea was in. Um, no, it's a duty of the secretary. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's why. Okay. I was <laughs> Until a revised communication policy. Okay, next comment. Um, I think it's clear enough, Vanessa, on, on F11 that it does coincide. Um, well, it says whichever is later. So I would change this to uh, <coughs> shall be assigned with select on an annual basis or at other so, times. In other words, they're, they're assigned sometime in April, which is when we reorg. Right. So I think that settles out. I had, so I had language for that on the previous page um, to read the, the board shall assign liaisons or did you do this already? Uh, following the f first meeting following the election members should prioritize the list of assignments in order of preference and submit the information to the town manager one week prior to the first meeting. The town manager shall provide a table that combines member input or priority list or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, we, we agree. Okay. We're going to so, move it to a section. Oh, so number one is just being moved entirely? <coughs> RL9 is going to go to section 129. And then what about comment oh. F11? <coughs> Like it's I don't think can it's necessary. So, can we just strike number one then? Yeah. Yeah, and we move it to the duties of the board. Okay. Great. I think was Dan's Dan, suggestion. Dan, are you okay with that? No, I think it's redundant. I don't think the words are necessary. As I, I agree. I don't think yeah. it's necessary. <coughs> because we're already saying we're assigning them right. I in, agree. in April. So, <coughs> so I say strike right. number Stri one. Strike number one. Great. Right. Uh, comment B12, that's fine. Well, I, I got a question with that one. It says, I'll tell you why. I mean, when you share a liaison with somebody, so if, um, so Vanessa and I share public safety. If I'm going to send something to one of the chiefs, oh, so you have two liaisons. Yeah, okay. And then I, and then, you know, I have to send it to the chair, to the chair. How can I discuss it with? Why, why not? Why not strike the chair there? That was. I had the same comment actually. Yep. That's all. That's all. Well, all correspondence from. I, I love the idea that the, the town manager who supervises yep. all of these people right. be cognizant. Right. I think yeah. that's so highly appropriate. That will read all correspondence from we liaisons box, to a email box to overflow yeah, exactly. right. we, bountifully. We get it. <laughs> All correspondence from a liaison to the department head will copy the town manager. The town manager. Yeah. Yep. Okay. B13. Um, that is implied by our personnel policy, I think. I think it needs to be memorialized. I agree. I, I, where is this B13? Add the sixth. Under no circumstances will we act in liaison role, direct or manage staff. Um, yeah, no kidding. Okay. Sometimes you can just kind of say something out loud. I all think right. that's no, I agree. That's all right. Yeah, cool. that's, a, that's a good. I like that. Okay. Anything more on the one one section one one? Okay. One two board meetings. We have comments on uh, page one dash three. Um, Barry, would you agree that uh, office hours after each meeting are <laughs> not really? Uh, work? I mean, they're not. What's your average uh, attendance, guys? Really? Mr. Brown, not you know, <coughs> other than him, nobody. But yeah. I, you know, it's very rare. Can we say know. try it and see? And I think we, we did it. try it and saw. I, yeah, saw. I just you, you did it through the override. Making ourselves available is never a bad thing, but you know, um, well, if we're there and they don't you. come. You know, I, I'm your board. Okay. You know, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really care. B fifteen. So wait, are we keeping B fourteen? Like, what what's yeah, happening? I'm okay with it if you are. I, I I'm agnostic at this point. I mean, if we're just saying we're offering the office hours once a month. We're just not saying when they are. At least. At least once a month. At least once a month. Right. right. So right. we decide to do it. So if, we, if there's if there's stuff that's coming up, we can do it more. Than right. Sure. Point so right. we publicize this usually 90 days in advance, yeah. at least in quarterly newsletters. Right. Okay. And office hours are. So, okay. so, so we're, we're not we, making anything specific. We can always specific. add more, we're, but we'd ask you to keep the first meeting of the month always. So we're 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 going to keep one two two as as is. 
Okay. That would be my suggestion. All right. Under one, two, three, number one. Uh, I think that was an earlier draft in consultation with yeah, town manager. What I think that dropped out somehow. Right? Yeah. I agree with B15. Yep. That's fine. Yep. B16. Um, I would simply say there. Uh, I had something simple to say and where to go. Um, well, the, the, the implication was to the chair, the chair, hold on, I know okay. what you're saying. The chair right. reserves the right to, one to schedule the agenda item in, at a future select board meeting. That's all you have to say. Well, you know, the implication is that, and I think in practice this year, when some when two members wanted it, it was assumed it was going to be the next meeting. I, I never assumed that. It, it, I mean, sometimes it can be. Sometimes tried. it can't, can't be because you've got already a full agenda. What's wrong with the chair reserves the right when to schedule the, that agenda item? That's fine. At, at a future select board. Okay, okay. okay. that's, that's where I will go yep. with that. Okay. Yeah, this year it just so happened that that Bob and I were were able to get the request in at the yeah. next meeting but you're right it may not right I just don't want to you know the expectation of the member the members well, yeah members. Well, right, two members two members, right. members yeah. yeah but they I mean I think the chair should respect that if two, right. two members want something you know yeah. to the extent possible but you're right sometimes like this meeting <laughs> would have been hard to fit in anything else I would yeah. want to add something mm, I don't know what, what I don't want to see happen is if two members, and again, this is, you know, going far beyond us, but that a chair sort of indefinitely postpones an agenda item because they don't want it there. Right? The idea that, behind allowing well, two... Well, a chair could try that. I don't think that it right. would... And there's nothing but, about but they have, amended. But they are yeah. given the power to do so and by... two members can place an agenda item on it. Right. But it's, if we add this language, it says the chair reserves the right when to schedule that agenda item, which means that they could postpone it indefinitely. Well, there's this little thing about, you know, something not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Uh, you know, I get what you're saying, that what you're doing is... You're putting too much power in the hands of the chair right. Right. to permanently table something they don't want to talk about. Yes. Um, that's not the intention of this amendment. I know but that's, that's the not power the intention that it gives of it. Them. Um, it, it, it. You know, how do you word that so that doesn't happen? I mean, I know what you're trying to say because okay. it doesn't work but sometimes. I want that on no, the agenda we next week. Well, we got thing. yeah, we had 17 things coming in, in and we can't right. get it in. So. Yeah. Um, I, I understand that the chair's got to have some latitude to manage that. But by the same token, what you're saying, Vanessa, is also true that the chair should never have the power right. to you know truncate a topic that two members want right. to talk about right. indefinitely. Yeah. I mean, that's not okay. Um, and I think the way this, let's just work on a little bit of change in the wording to, so that that won't, go, won't happen. Mm -hmm. could, could we say something like... Um, well, the way it's worded now, yes, is fine. It just says the agenda shall contain. It doesn't say the next agenda. Contain. That's true. That's true. It's, it's vague. So it, it leaves it up to the chair as to when to do it. But Couldn't it you say that the chair will respond at the next available agenda and, and you know entry? This is requiring the chair to do it. Containing I don't know how much further. Well, if two members come out. together, I think the chair is required to do it. Right. Now, I mean, the maybe it's not the next meeting because yeah. you get 17 things to do. Right. But, yeah. you know, the, there's going to be a meeting like the 23rd, for example, which is... Uh, how about we just say the chair shall schedule uh, that that agenda item at a future it's select board so meeting? Of course. Oh, how about as soon as practical? I like that. Yeah, yeah. as soon as practical or in a timely fashion. Due course. Any any course. Any I think any any variations on that is fine. We're actually winding up doing our cup now, which I was trying to avoid. <laughs> but then again, we can't lose the detail. So. Yeah. yeah. So so, what are we deciding on this, Dan, or what? Uh, the last thing we said. Somebody so wanted to. Are you rewriting as it? As soon as practical. Yes. All right. Excellent. All right. As is practical. So he's going to refresh us on this when we go through the motion. Okay. okay. All right. B14. Um, I, just, I get it. And I have 17. Uh, no, yeah. you yep. 14. We just. That's right. Over. 17 now. Uh, I hit a mark here. Uh, Okay, I, I would recommend number three be rewarded as follow. Be published, strike the words in advance as far as possible, and then put 
uh, the Thursday before the next scheduled meeting. It is considered best practice that all attachments, memos, and submissions required for board consideration be included in the packet on that Thursday. Uh, Can we uh, add something to the effect of and made available to the public? That generally by happens. definition, it's by definition, it is. It's it, when as soon as that packet goes out, <coughs> it goes on the right. it goes on the it's supposed website. Yeah. But, right? Doesn't that what happens? Yeah. Okay, well, that's available. Right. There are people that read it before I get to it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that's before it. I open my email, I've got a phone call. I bring the agenda to the town clerk. Whatever gets finalized Thursday, and um, mm -hmm. Thursday at three thirty, the town clerk takes all the postings she got for the day. <coughs> Adds them to the event calendar on mm -hmm. the website, and then as soon as she creates that event, I go in and add the packet. Right, cool. And usually, you guys probably get the packet before it goes off. Um, I send you guys the Got email. It. Yeah. Because then I just have to wait for her. To it's just the timing issue at that yeah, point. Yeah, but it's out like, there. It's I'm fine with yeah. that then. Okay, cool. All right, I have an objection. <coughs> no, yeah. it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no. If you're going to have a public hearing like tonight, Thursday's not fast enough. So you need to do it on Tuesday, seven days notice. Oh, right. Can we just add a sub bullet that says. What's wrong with the current wording? Because, I mean, it, it's, the current wording is fine, but it just basically allows um, stuff to dribble in before members have a chance to actually read it. Yeah, yeah. Just say be published with all relevant material in advance as far as possible. That's pretty neat. That part's fine. I mean, gathering the information is one thing. When to publish, it's another. Um, the latest, the way you're meeting now, the latest deadline is Thursday by open meeting law. Yeah, but right. it could be Tuesday. And I don't know. Hey, I would prefer it to be Tuesday, Tuesday, but, you know, because then you have well, a week to it's, read it. It's a, it's a toss-up between right. freshness and... Right. So, yeah. uh, you know, given Bob's comment, I'm fine with leaving three as is. And I just say be published with all relevant documents or something yeah. to Barry's I, I think here. that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Attachments, memos, and stuff. I don't know. I just, I, How do you want to work that with all... Maybe publish with all uh, attachments, with all memos, and submissions. Or just a packet. Can we say at least X many days in advance of the meeting? No. I'm trying to get away from that. Because okay. for a hearing, it could be seven days right. normally right. Thursday. No, 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 that would allow for that. So so Barry's point is well taken, that that sometimes um, some a certain chair might have uh, allowed, uh, you know, information to dribble in uh, on Monday or something like well, that. The information dribbles in. I need to ask you. Look, it dribbles in on this. It, it and, does. And it yeah. made it better. Yeah, okay. Um, you guys, but I'm reading it for the first time. At Are you table. discussing the packet okay, or so agenda? Because this is the agenda. Are you discussing the packet? Oh, it is the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Bob. The, All right, so now, what are we doing? The agenda. <laughs> yeah, the agenda doesn't change. Just Thursday. Remind the group that it's 10 10. Yeah. Um, well, I want to hear all your comments. Um, I, 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 yeah, I had kind of wanted you to add to this stuff at this point through, but I think uh, we, we will be able to go through the other part quicker for having We've done got this. the room book until midnight. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that. And then if this is the, if this is the yeah, right. agenda, Dan and Barry, yep. would you guys be okay with leaving it as written? I would. Um, that's fine. Okay. Let's keep going. So be okay. So we're done with uh, one, two, three meeting agendas. One, two, four. No, I didn't see anything. Any other comments? One, two, five. Public comment. And again, we have. Uh, yeah. So F I don't think. T uh, wait a minute. I don't think it's the public is enjoined from. They're not from a legal perspective. But that's I the chair's job. The right. chair can say, please address topics that the board is going to deal with, not, not that topic. I mean, similar to, you know, we say avoid making disparaging remarks, what I want to avoid in the future, and it's it's been, you know, perfectly civil this year, but, um, you know, it's public comment is not the time for candidates to plead their case. There are other ways. Well, to I, I think you're stepping over the line on that a little bit, uh, honestly. Yeah. Why? I think they do have a little more leeway to say what they want. But uh, the chair can always say that's not on topic. Remember, public comment is about material that, that could, fall. issues that can come before the board. So if they stray from that, 
structure. The chair is free to say you're off topic. That's right. But so I let the chair have a little discretion here. I think you, I, you can't. It's, it's the definition of do. pornography. Yeah, I was gonna say it's hard to. You can't define it, but you know it when you see it. Right. But, you're almost done, Dad. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That wasn't my quote. Somebody else. <laughs> Um, well, it's been mean just to be to harsh. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, what's the pleasure of the board on that? I, I think it, it, the comments have to. I the push. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Dan, you just, the hole is getting Dan. deeper. Yeah. Dan, we're in the eighth inning here. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, Dan, out. I think, you, no, I think you better bring the reliever. Yeah. 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 Oh, the closer, go for the righty, go wait till yeah. the ninth. All right, so, Dan, um, I get Vanessa's point. However, um, Vanessa, it is, it is an open meeting law that comments have to be under the board, board's purview. Yeah. Public comments need to be under something that the, the board. Um, they want to stand up and talk about pot <coughs> when we're talking about liquor licenses. It's okay. Yes. Because it's in. Because yeah. right. yes. Because we do potholes. Yeah. Okay. Where I was uh, going with this is that um, I'm running because X Y Z, and you're yeah, not doing yeah. that. And right. That, like that's. Well, you're not allowed to do that in a public building. Yes. Period. And the chairman should be able to go. Right. Hey, you can't say that stuff. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, the jury will disregard that. So it's covered by, I think, two laws. It's covered by that law, which I think is an ethics law, and I think it's covered by open meeting law, which you just said. Okay. So, um, so I will um, withdraw F-18. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I had to go back here uh, to, real quick. Yeah, under one, two, three, meeting agendas. Uh, under the pieces of the agenda, uh, reports and comments, including select board liaison reports and comments. I believe that's what it says in our. Sorry, where agenda. are you? Liaison yeah. reports and comments. Under one, two, three, section one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Looking for our current agenda. Is that what it says? Uh oh, we're back at the agenda. Why are we? Yep. Reports and comments. Selectman's liaison reports and comments. So the and comments was omitted. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Got it. All right. So let's continue. Where are we page? Public comment. Uh, we just dealt with one, two, six executive sessions. Anything there? Yeah. Okay. One, two, seven. Uh, Ray had a number of comments here. Uh, I think he misunderstood what I was trying to do under Rule One. I was not trying to define the select board, which I agree is in a different section of the charter than 3-2. Yeah. But I'm trying to say, uh, th this is how you determine the quorum. It's the count of the number of people on the board that is stipulated in 3-2. And that is the correct reference. But that could change. Somebody amends the charter. So, Can we add something to the effect of a quorum for doing select board business shall be a majority of the total number of select board members present. and not a majority of members present? So you always need three votes. So you always need, but well, I mean, yeah. Well, it, what could, it, it could be the majority you of those three present. people here, two of them vote. For I don't them. think you need that. That's, that's I guess yeah, it's redundant because yeah. we're five, not seven. Again, that could be an onboarding or a training. Yeah, okay. but, but it says here shall be a majority of the total number so, of select board Which could be exactly the Couldn't number it say as defined by the Reading Home Rule Charter without putting a section in there? Oh. Uh, you could. But, yeah. uh, I, I have no going on this one. Um, let's see. Nor do I. Rule three. Yeah, that one was more just a question of: Is there a reason why you, the, why the subcommittee chose to formalize that, as opposed to? Uh, it may not be well. It may not be necessary, but no. Actually, we just invoked that tonight. We yeah, just, we just did that tonight. We all agreed the chair, to move the chair it. and the town yeah. manager set the agenda, but that can be overridden in, in its order. Yeah, not its content by a majority vote of the board. And I don't think it should be a super majority. Oh, you didn't suggest it on that one. Okay. No, I suggested it on the bottom. One. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm fine with three then. It okay. Was cool. Just more general questions. Um, Yes, so my next question was um, for Rule 6. A procedural yep. ruling of the chair may be overturned by a majority okay. of the board. I would suggest a super majority, which would be a f require four votes as opposed to three. Why? You, well, I don't think there's a precedent for that in either town meeting or in Roberts. So that would be kind of a more stringent 
interpretation, I think. Uh, what would, what, if you could point to some other. So the. Um, I mean, is it really that. The, where I'm going with, thing with, thing with thing. all, you know, as I went through the entire um, yeah. policy, there were two things I tried to watch out for. One, giving the power, giving the chair too much power, um, and another is giving a simple majority more power over a chair that people may disagree with out of personal interest as opposed to order. Um, and so this would mean that... So what this means in our setting would be all four of the other members have to disagree with the chair. Correct. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, you know, we're asking, asking the chair, wait, we're asking the chair, the power. we're well, asking the chair to run the, to preside over the meetings. Yeah. And, um, and I think to then change that um, should be, uh, should, should, should really be a, the rest of the board should say, look, chair, we, we want to take this. It's a procedural thing, though, right? Right. I mean, yeah. It's not yeah. like you're fired from being the chair. Yeah. I'm not aware of any other procedural vote that requires a supermajority. No. I think that would be a bit of an unprecedented. All right. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I agree that we shouldn't be. You don't do it lightly. No. You know, we shouldn't be no. fighting yeah. with each other over no. issues. I mean, it's got to be serious if you've got a procedural problem that's got to be overturned. I get that. And that's where I was going, where if, if there's that much of an objection to something that the chair is doing, it really needs to be mm -hmm. egregious, and therefore the other four members should be the, all in well, agreement. It's not even, to yeah. I would say it's highly unlikely that you're ever going to get four people to go after one, yeah. ever. Which is, I, I, I almost want to make that, that was sort of where I was going, where it should be harder. Um, Doesn't that kind of empower the chair? Yeah. Well, and this is yeah. where, like, you know, is, as I went through it, this is where some of the checks and balances come yeah. in, right? Where you give them some more power in some areas so, and a little less in others. So this gives a little bit of an edge to the board um, to override. But, right. and, and it could be even a friendly situation, like we did tonight with the poll here. Yeah. So, well, I think one of the things to think about, um, Vanessa, just is I, I almost think if you do this super majority thing, you put so much power in the hands of whoever's the chair that it almost becomes onerous. I mean, if three members say, hey, you know, you shouldn't be doing it this way. Um, we're not talking about impeaching somebody. We're just really talking about, I mean, like I've said before, I mean, we do important stuff, but you know, yeah. we can't take it, ourselves quite that seriously on some issues. You know, I mean, I'm, t I'm torn. I'm torn. I see both sides. I, I really do. If it, ta it takes two members to request or, or, or want something on the agenda, why shouldn't it take three members to kind of say to the chair, "Well, Mr. Chair, I think you know we, we disagree with that." Yeah, I, I don't. I, I think I think something like that gives the, the chair a lot more power to make rulings that he may know that he'll be able to do because he doesn't because there's four votes not to the well the chair then only needs one person to agree. Um, yeah, Bob, I, I, do I, you Dan, want I think to Bob wants to say to go. Um, um, just from from other boards, this is EVA for instance. Um, super majority then has a big impact with attendance. So if one of you oh, is absent true. and you need a supermajority, it's not happening. You can't do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, when ZBA needs a supermajority and there's only four present, they right. need Because to that would be determined not by those present voting, just Correct. by virtue of the other. Yeah. Well, what we've said earlier. Rule one. Yeah. yeah. The Super amount majority of is something, you know, that, that would be uh, impacted by your attendance that yeah. night. If there's three members present, if there's four members present, you'll never have a supermajority. Super, you know, I do yeah. think it's important to let the we elect the chair. The chair's got to have certain latitude to do the job we've asked the chair to do. Right. I don't think there's any question about that. Um, I just do worry that if you right. empower that person too much because you know we're five equals really yeah I mean and we choose among us to have one you kind of maintain order and facilitate right. discussion and all that kind of <laughs> thing, which makes sense um, 
it's kind of like the thing I brought up on the first page. I mean, if you if you give them, if you give that chairperson, <coughs> whoever that person is, yeah, too much, yeah, and they err with it, yeah, you know, it can get chaotic. So, so I, I, board. I, I rescind my comment. <laughs> that was a good discussion. It was. A, I, it a was okay. I wasn't firm on this. It was just. Yeah. A, That's okay. Yeah. I mean, it is consistent with uh, switching the liaisons yep. to yep. a board. Yeah. Just yeah. a board. I, I think so. it's fine. So um, okay. please remove F twenty three. Thank you. Guys. Very good. Sorry, uh, that went way deeper than I did. Which is sort of funny as we approach roll yeah. nine. <laughs> yeah. Are you, you, you going to withdraw that one too? But we all struggle. <laughs> well, we all struggle with this, you know. I'll, I'll give a parallel to that. Uh, the moderator does that. He, he will rule certain amendments out of order because they're not under the four corners of the article. Mm -hmm. So, in that sense, the chair ought to have similar authority. I think uh, we are entrusting the chair with a certain amount of judgment. So. And this is, you know, um, when would that happen? Oh, sorry. So similar. So okay. Um, instead of hold on, uh, <coughs> can we add language that a majority can overrule? And I, I labeled it a veto. But um, we still have, we already have that in Rule Six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So, so Rule Six would overrule Rule it's a, Nine. It's a procedural, uh, right? Because that's procedural. Okay, that's fine. Yep. So if the chair deems it irrelevant, and then someone can say, "Wait a minute, it is relevant." It is relevant. I move it to overrule that ruling. Second. Yeah. All in favor? I'm okay. fine with that. Okay. Let's discuss the amendment. Um, rule ten <coughs> is also mine. Oh uh, yeah, Ray. Ray uh, said that right below arm twenty five. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Right. I didn't right. think of that um, all on my own. Can I come on rule you made the comment of definitions for every bullet in Rule 10. I, I took a stab at doing that for the ones that I thought were not clear. I don't know that every one of them needs that. But um, So what Ray said about comment 3. Yeah. Where you have, could you have that oh. stuff that you're onboarding manually? Yeah. Uh, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, okay. Um, is postponed to a time certain clear to everyone? Clear enough? If that is to another meeting at a specific time, yeah. I think this like needs it tonight. Yeah, yeah. I think so we don't this, have to explain that. This okay. should be in an onboarding document. Oh, right. There you go. Right. I'm fine with that. There you go. Okay. Definite. Uh, so now we come to one Dan added by email. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, eight. Uh, <laughs> Jim that up this afternoon using an email I'd sent to Andy and change it around a little. So Vanessa had said we should have guidance for public hearings, and this is what I offered. Um, it's open for any suggestions. It's oh, kind of I, what we do. Well, yeah. we, we weren't necessarily doing the steps in that order at so one point. Dan, could I just quickly back up and make sure I understand where we went, where, what we did on Rule 10? Yeah. Um, We're going to leave it alone. We just leave it as and is. And commend any further detail to a training onboarding and, manual. And, and know that we're doing this against legal counsel's yeah. advice. Um, I have a question, actually. Sorry to backtrack as well. Okay. On what you just said, Andy, the second bullet, bullet from the bottom to move the question requires two thirds vote. Is that four for us? Uh, Since yeah. we are it five. Is. But can, that's, a, that's a Roberts thing. Can we change that? What do you want it to be? Majority? Super majority. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I mean, it's two. Right? Well, it will be by definition. Yeah, right. What if we go to six people? Is that people? assumed? Is that a given? Um, it's a suit. Well, when it's two thirds of five, it's got to be four. It, it is a super majority. Got to round up. Not it's greater than 0.5, right? All right. I, hey, fine. there you go. I'm going to raise one and a half hands. hands. Okay. So <laughs> let's go to one, two, one, two, eight public hearings. Uh, I thought uh, what you wrote was fine. Okay. In there. I mean, it's kind of what we do. That's exactly we, the reason. We, we yeah. stray sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> well, it, we it wasn't clear. Our, it wasn't completely clear, so I set it up in an email yeah. form. Yeah. He said, "Oh yeah." That's I actually did read that email before coming. For to number the five, can we change audience to public? Yes. Where are we now? Oh, no, number five. Chair or does he need any questions? Yeah. <laughs> Up top, number five. Yep. 
to the public. And again, I don't think the last sentence is necessary. That could be an onboarding thing, taking the show of hands. It's not a requirement. It's I think it, it's good in our policy so that okay. the public can expect right. that as well. Yep. Um, sure. I'm, I'm open to that. I wrote it. <laughs> guess I'm open to it. And then the board has previously wanted to move to sections, and this would make sense after. 1.2.9, 1.2.10. What's what's the other? Okay. Let's see. Um, no, we can we can, we already agreed with that. Let's go back. Yeah, let's, nominate, let's hold that off till nominate board more. members for liaison yep. assignments. Okay. Prepare and deliver the state of the town. And that, that's under the duties Moving of the board. From the chair yeah. to, to the board. And, and where are you su where, where are, are you suggesting to put so that earlier on? under one one two? You had indicated move these two sections right. to something under the board. Oh, I, I yes. think the state of the town should be under one three responsibilities of the board rather than under one two. One two is really the conduct okay. of the meetings. Um, one two pertains to meetings. So one three is general responsibilities. So how about the so liaison okay. nominations? Oh, so uh, that belong in one two. Responsibilities of the board, I guess. So yeah, I think, I think it all. Are we, just, are we, are we agreed on that? <laughs> we, uh, I mean, well, the, I think the liaison is going to be in place. I'm not. Right. I'm not hard over. But just in terms of the process of how it gets done. The uh, state, state of the union. Uh, state of the, state right. state no, that of the town should be in yeah, three. That, uh, that okay. Andy, that's a good suggestion. Just by uh, charter, it is yeah. the board. Yeah. But <coughs> that's how it's referred. Okay. So what do we got? Um, so, Dan, where are we going to put uh, oh, yeah, the you, liaison? RL liaison assignments. I'm okay with one two the way Bob had one structured it. One, one two, two nine. nine. Is that all right? One two nine. Oh, it's just after the public hearing yeah. stuff. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Okay. And then under, uh, I like the RL twenty nine uh, from Bob. Uh, the general law, uh, the select board shall give the members information of the state of the town. Yeah. Thank you, sir. With clo closing the quote. Yeah. Outgoing chair and incoming chair. That that's great. That should be a separate paragraph under one three one. Yes. Right. I, I, yeah, I, I wrote that. Okay. 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 Good. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I got an RL comment, so it was not that I, I yeah. take. Okay. Right. All right. Next comment was uh, V thirty. So you've already dealt with. Yeah, that. yeah. That's the one we just approved. I have a question. So um, I have a recommendation for one three four. Yep. Um, the select board <coughs> may approve a written contract. So I would remove is responsible for approving A and say may approve. Just in keep it so that All it's right. keeping, keeping in charter, with, charter. charter. with the charter. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. So when would it, when would when would the select board not approve a written contract if town manager? If an employment agreement is made that doesn't include a contract. Oh, that's true. You could have one without the other. Right. And one. the charter allows for that, yeah. and so I wanted it to that's follow. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. So but who would take the job without a contract? Yeah, uh, that's, uh, I that's agree, a practical consideration. But that's, you know. Yeah, that's Tuesday to Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, he was for a while. Well, he was he was the lead buffalo. So. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> So earlier you, you, a few arrows. <laughs> you wanted to move something to this section, we just put it at the end. Uh, that, would be, yeah, yeah. that would be the state of the town. Right. Yeah, I think that's that's fine with me. Oh, we already did. Are you talking about RL29? Should that be a separate section? It should be under 131. I yeah. think that's what Bob just suggested is put in as. Yeah, I think a separate section one, is good. 138 one, so one, or something? 139. 139. What's 138? Or do you. Oh, boy. Um, I can't remember. We didn't, we didn't move the uh, liaisons to there, remember? I think you might have made that. Oh, yeah, sorry, 138. Yep. Okay. We good? Communication, we're going to jump over. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to get right into 1 5 here. Um, Okay, I'm on page one, one dash ten. One dash ten. Yeah. Uh, so again, I would just recommend changing this. I mean, do we want to expire on April thirtieth or when the board reorganizes? Wait, which what page are we on now? One dash ten. Number one under VAS. Okay. VAS member shall be appointed for staggered two-year terms. So arrange that one term shall expire 
each year. Each year? Yeah, yeah just remove the April 30th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think for this purposes, we can disregard F34, just a general comment. Okay. Yep. So what I'm offering under RL36 uh -huh. is uh, a, re a rewrite of five and six to um, encompass town, uh, town council's recommendations. So those, that's not actually in the text, but that's what I would put in place of five and six. Okay. I like five. It's, it's an exact track of what Ray wrote in the comment. So we were saying, really, we're going to obey this 48-hour rule. It really is the way we should uh, mm -hmm. normalize yeah. things. Yeah. In an extreme uh, situation, where there's like no more vast meetings possible, and we have to make the appointment. Right then we, then and only then, do we admit right someone within okay. 48. Okay. So that, that's the idea there. Yeah, I, I'm fine with five and six. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, upper, so. Operationally, Dan, yeah. since you and I did this the yeah. last time, um, it would make life easier. Well, it would make life easier, but you know, and, and get more notice. Um, I think what happened, people would cancel and then want to come the next day I mean it, well it was, that's where we have to say well sorry yeah. 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 at the same time we want to encourage we, we, no, we I want people but to really be I think what Ray's saying is we, we were not strictly compliant we have to uh, we I, I read it the same way which is that we're not in compliance with open we're, I know Caitlin you've struggled with getting there, sometimes I think firm. the law works against us and that may be right. the case but yeah. it is what it is I mean there were t I mean we those last couple of meetings, we juggled. It's all well attention. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it's optional. Is the no, thing. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I cleared up your F thirty seven question. I think. Uh, what does this mean? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I, so basically, so what, I just think the was so, better. So the thing is, if someone says they they cancel their appointment, they want to come the next day, mm -hmm. right? And they're not on the agenda. We say, I'm sorry, you cannot serve this year. Is that, is that they, can't, they can't serve. It's like they, they cannot have I mean, They cancel their appointment. Well, let's say they can't make it, and it's like, you know. We reschedule. Right. But well, what if the only the they date just, left they is the They come see the full board. They just don't see the back. That, that could happen. I think that's okay. Well, right. well, there that's is, a, good, yeah, that's there a, is a, a loophole. Which is, if the vast chair determines that, that there are exigent circumstances that justify an interview with less than 48 yeah. hours notice, then that person may be that, interviewed. Yeah, that's why I put that in there. We have the loophole. That was my verbiage. Yes. Yeah. And I used Ray's, uh, what was it? Uh, best practice. The exigent circumstances. Oh, yeah. Right. It sounds like yeah. a great legal yeah. term. Like the rule of necessity. <laughs> yeah. I bet they don't know what that is. Anybody know what that is? Exigent. If every member of the board has a conflict in a particular area, nobody has a conflict. Because you're going to have a, a voting board. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Rule of necessity. Okay. Look it up. All right. So we are on to B39, which is on number eight. Mm -hmm. um, I'm. So um, there's a comment here. Um, well, look H at what Ray rewrote. Um, yes, and I'm, I'm, the rewrite's fine. My comment okay. here is, um, I don't. I would like to strike. Each member is limited to two challenges. Yeah, I, that's a little too football-y. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> since I was the person who wrote the comment, yeah. can I yeah, yeah, sure. explain? I, I just think that um, we should be doing everything we can in our power to encourage people to volunteer. And the way it was written now, uh, there could be a board member that says, "I'm sorry, I, I don't, I don't." I want to pull you off, and no reason is given. And I think if someone does not want to, if it also too, it, it kind of disrespects a little bit the work of the VASC. The people who are going to be meeting six, eight, twelve times, juggling schedules to meet with people and make a recommendation. If someone wants somebody off, I think a reason should be given. I guess the point I would say is this a solution in search of a problem? Uh, no, we've taken people off with no. Well, so there's we there's. Have? I don't remember There's that. two parts to Barry's comment here. Yeah, One of them is that a true. reason must be given, and I'm actually that's in fine. agreement with that. That's the part fine. that I would suggest removing is each member is limited yeah. to two challenges. Yeah. So yes, I yes, think we, yes. we appoint dozens of volunteers. That's the part I made my comment of. Right. Yeah, yeah. so okay. that's the, I would recommend Yeah, that was the, the first second, part I mean, I'm, I'm not as wed to that. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I, I, right. Again, I just don't want to give any one All select right. board member the power to kind of 
make it difficult for an individual so to serve. I'm fine with that. Did, well, did, oh. did Ray's redraft address? You know what, I didn't need. No, no I just, but I'll I, figure I out. I made a comment here. <clears throat> can, can we accept that temporarily yeah. so we can read it? Yeah. Um, Number eight. I just, <laughs> I did a cross out on the comment instead of in Ray's oh, words. Just, so. just don't do. No, that part's fine. I'll show you. Wait, what did he write? Yeah. Yeah. Is this in the blue? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right, here's what Ray wrote. Okay, here it is. It's accepted here. Bash shall presume. There's a single item on the agenda. Any member of the select board or any. And this is where person. I'll have to add, you know, shall have to state a reason why. Does the person have to state a reason? Or the yeah, the select board member? The, the, the only objection I have to the. I think it's a good idea in a way to have the person. Um, state a reason okay but the the on the flip side um, that reason may be embarrassing to the yeah to the um, I, I would ease up on requirements how about should as opposed to must okay yeah I, I mean just sure. you know somebody raises their hand to volunteer somebody on the board says um, I don't think that person should be and then there's just no explanation I mean that's right. kind of but in some cases that explanation may be <clears throat> the explanation may be worse than this right. it may embarrass the yeah uh, I, I can't even imagine a situation in which that might happen but this <clears throat> this could be where if the policy states should then the rest right. of the board can't but it's already pass. passed the VASC so the VASC has already right. done the vetting so you would think that there's True, okay. but there's only, so, I mean. But I think it's important so to note that no subcommittee, just because a recommendation is made, does not mean that that is the final outcome. No, but if, if right. we're going to go against it, this should be, okay, here's why. Um, uh, I, so, I just, Dan, how do you feel about should instead of must? Should. Where are you? Okay. Um, that's added language. B39. Different. But where in Ray, it's not in Ray's rewrite is my point. Correct, it would have to be so added. where do you want it to have be added? Uh, just after the end. Uh, so right Ray's before the last sentence. So how, does, so how does Ray's rewrite deal with my comment? Well, let's have Bob he put it in. Vanessa's First part. Oh. oh, that wasn't, that was, he didn't deal with your comment. No. Sure. And which one of your comments did he deal with? You didn't comment on that. Confused. Um, Maybe he meant Barry. Oh yeah, I, he the, may have I think he made a mistake. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> oh, but I don't see Vanessa's comment. I didn't comment on that. Yeah. I think he. Oh, he, he may. I think he meant you. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. And he didn't. I don't think he saw Barry's comments at, the, at that point. I think he was referring to some comments you made way up here. Yeah, that's because I didn't understand one of the bullets. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. But either way, I mean, I'm fine with the rewrite. I would just suggest incorporating the reason portion that Barry mentioned, and I'm fine with that. Um, can I ask you, okay, it says any member of the select board, that's easy. Any person who's been interviewed or recommended. Does that mean if I'm interviewed for a certain board, let's say recreation, I can ask for another one? be pulled from rec the recreation list. It doesn't say just myself. Oh, I'm, no, I don't think, I don't think. I don't know what the intent here is. I don't think the volunteer should say. They should only. I don't want this guy on ZBA. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. Recommended language, Bob? It's hard to put them both in the same sentence. Yeah, it is. So separate them. Yeah. Make them a little make duplicative, it but further. yeah. So any member of the select board, and then how do you want to add in the you'd like a suggested reason? Uh, or just put a comment at the end of the, after separately? Yeah. Or maybe a, uh, the requester shall should give a reason for doing it. Wait a minute. Don't, don't. That's no, good. I'm just going to copy it. Yeah. No, I'm just, you know, that's too complex. I think I've got it here. I was just going to no, chop too much. this into two pieces. Now. Okay, I guess you're Here, not done yet. It's not working. I think it's yeah, the rest. Yeah, it is. The rest is easy. 
Uh, what I was going to suggest is after separately saying uh, such said person shall should offer a reason. Right, or is so that covers both? So let's let's revert back to the wording. But then they can ask for someone other than themselves. May oh. ask. Oh, all right, I didn't get that complexity. See if this works. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, and I get to remote participation. Bunch of stuff there. So I kind of split the first into two oh, parts. Okay, and I got the third sentence. That so any for, member of the select board may request may ask. Yeah. yeah. Any person who's been interviewed or recommended yeah. may ask for their particular one to be voted on separately. And then in any case, any request to remove any should include the reason. Why would a, a person um, want to be voted on? Is, is this okay? Yeah. I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think we're done with one. Really? Yeah. I don't have anything else. You? Are we not doing two? We're doing two. Now two is the same, same as it was, so you should have that yeah, in the packet. Same. Okay. There, weren't, there weren't as many comments. Yeah, <laughs> thankfully. Okay, um, <clears throat> so let's go to uh, remote participation, which seemed to elicit the most. So Wait, under remote participation, yep. uh, additional regulations yeah, number three. Yep, it's not written. Right. So it's in your packet. Uh, Mike, I was going to suggest removing mm -hmm. may authorize because it implies that they may also deny the request for remote participation. Mm -hmm. I mean, Ray had a comment back. Yeah, he said, you know, state law doesn't require this. Mm -hmm. um, and this, I think this was my comment of, you know, it's the equivalent of having to ask for a bathroom pass, right? I, <laughs> that one well, closed up. <laughs> 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 it did. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so how, I would suggest. Um, Thanks for not stopping me just a minute ago. <laughs> essentially, removing item three. I think I'd, three is there to prevent dilatory use of the remote participation. I'd like to think that anyone who is elected to the board has grown up enough not to abuse no. the privilege. I mean, it's kind of like what an absentee ballot is really supposed to be. You're really supposed to be unable to yeah. get to the poll. No, but that's kind of honored in the breach more than the observance sometimes. True. Um, uh, what I'm, what's the will of the board? I'm okay with either way. Here. I, I not hard over on. Uh, you know, I think we we should not ask for a bathroom pass. Okay. Um, and I think if not someone important. abuses it, yeah. then that can be addressed. But so what is the language going to say? I would strike number three entirely. Or do you want to just say that the CMR 2910-5, if physical attendance would be unreasonably difficult? Just yeah. Wait to say that again. Oh, it's already there. Uh, okay, so I would take out all those A through E, and then say the chair, acting chair, may, uh, may authorize, are we okay with that, remote participation? Uh, that was actually the, the problem I had with it, because the may authorize means that they can deny it. There's any number of reasons yeah. why someone may need to... Well, I think the, the I think Ray further said that that's what the chair is there to do. So the only thing that chair would have to agree, if physical attendance would be unreasonably difficult, and then again, you've got rule six, if the board doesn't like what the chair ruled. Right, you've got but a quorum there, they so can what, the chair. What, where I'm going with this is, yeah. um, if someone wants to participate remotely for personal reasons for a short period of time, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's necessarily fair to that member to have to disclose those reasons in order to have it justified by the chair. Okay. That's a good point. So, so that's why I would strike three entirely. All right. I've just said that how about may authorize upon determination that physical attendance would be unreasonably difficult. Well, it's, again, the may is the objection. It's the may. Yeah. yeah. Shall. I don't you want to just get rid of it? Then? I would just get rid of All it. All right. Three is whoosh, gone. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay. Um, we have and anybody then remotely participated in these meetings for almost a year? Or a while. It's pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, I think there's an understanding. I did it a couple years yeah. ago after yeah. following surgery. Yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. But you didn't ask anybody's permission. No, <clears throat> you just did it. Well, you just, you know, it was it was courtesy, right? No one right. denied yeah. it. I mean, yeah. kind of everybody so knows. So for, 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 for item four, four yep. um, I asked about audio only. I said, yeah, it, and it turns out you were right. And uh, it, there's no reason for it. So I yeah. would just strike that very first sentence and just start the remote audio must be clearly heard. That's pretty reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm fine with the rest okay. of it. Okay, all right. So we'll do that. Um, the rest back, of the uh, remote is fine. Uh, so I just going back to number two very quickly. Yep. Member of the board committee requesting remote participation must notify the chair, acting chair, in writing in advance of. Uh, I'm okay with no writing. It can we can be it can be email or a phone, or call. Or I mean, come a phone call or something. Okay. Then we have my request at the bottom, RLA. Oh, yeah. This is going to be upcoming next month. Which is what, Bob? Um, <clears throat> right now it says all handouts or presentations must be made available to remote participants in advance, period. So Ray yeah. and I had a chat about that. Okay. Uh -huh. um, you're having an upcoming executive session on building security. Um, any material presented yep. will never become public. Right. Ever. I would be very reluctant to circulate such material. Yep. So a request I might parties. make because I'm out of town would probably be... So I would just ask that you change it to all handouts or presentations that are considered public records. Okay. That'll be the same thing for any executive. So then any that, executive then that's session. just a question of when they become a public record. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Fine with that. Okay. Anything else on remote? Of participation. Yep. Nope. That's page. Um, oh. Oh. oh um, this is where we we, we some we something got yeah the costs out of well out of, I think this oh, maybe I'm, from an era where people paid for toll, toll calls and <laughs> who does that anymore? Right. Um, uh, Dan, I, yeah. just to interject, remember I said to you on the phone today that. Um, this got this um, responsibilities, general responsibilities. Oh, is this where it was? This is where it was. It got broken up. So the, we start at the head of 2.1 with the procedure, with the, with the, all the responsibilities of uh, board members in bullet bullet points. So the first one, if you look at section 2.1, procedures of boards or committees, and then it lists meeting rules. Minute, you with me? Everybody with me? Yeah. Where, where are you again? Sorry, what were two point two point one or two Second. dash page two dash one. Yep. Um, the bottom of we'll page where we start no, with. Back. Yeah, I just under which general provision? Yeah. So I think we pre we start presenting the responsibilities, procedures of boards, yep. general provisions, um, and then remote participation shouldn't be in that spot. Um, but that's not covered in the general bylaw. No, uh, right, I know, but then if you look, um, we, go, we continue, the list continues, annual town report, rules and regulations. Yes, the third major section. Right. Right, so I think that the annual town report, rules and regulations should go up under, under uh, general provisions. But that, but you said general bylaw section 331, and that does not pertain to where? Would remote participation belong? It's really under neither Home Rule Charter or bylaw, and that's what the two previous sections refer to. Yeah. And it, we remember we summarized, you, you summarized this yes. as a kind of a digest of what's in there. Right. And but it. this is all MGL. Remote participation is entirely MGL, it's not covered in either document. So that has to be a standalone. And, and it has to be done by you for all boards yeah. and committees. Right. And so, so but what's the objection? The the, uh, the, the objection is so yeah. so strong. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It it sort of is in a very different format than all the other responsibilities. Uh, yeah. So, is there a reason why we couldn't just move it to the end of this section and put? Oh. And, and so that it's oh, flowed. after. Oh, I got it. Sure. After rules and regulations. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that all you wanted to do? Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Sure. 
that that? Yeah, I'm going to start the opposite. It would flow better. All right, let's go back to number 11 on the remote. Do you want to strike that one about the costs? Does that seem kind of picky to people? Uh, but, I mean... Yeah. No, yes. are, are there really costs to people with remotely? It could be. I mean, you know, no. Mm. I mean, Skype he had a couple of members got a paid to travel Skype. internationally. Oh, that's true. Mm. I'm finally bigoted. All right. I, no, yeah. I wasn't, I didn't have strength things on that. So. All right, cool. <laughs> on the code of conduct, Gary, you had a few here. Yeah, I lost my, um, oh, yeah, so just, um, I have a handout here if you want. Yeah, so, yeah, it's easier to do it from there, probably. 2-2, two, two, code of conduct, you had B-11 and B-12. It's delineated, oh, the mission statement. Oh, it's delineated in the policy, yeah, just because our boards and commissions have a mission statement. Um, yeah. So that, I mean, that's just a simple. Sometimes they're described in the town charter, I believe. That's true, yeah. Well, the policy refer, does not refer to the charter, that's true, the charter of the bylaws. If those boards and committees are pure, purely creatures of uh, the charter or the bylaws with no additional duties given by the board, they don't appear in here. Right. Mm -hmm. Why don't so we leave it as is? I think I'd leave it as is. Yeah. Good. Um, B12, I disagreed with this. Um, yeah, I, I just don't understand what you mean. I don't you know, know what, what it means. A role of member to engage in unselfish service, not to benefit personally or politically from board or. I mean. Why would I, you I say benefit from? Yeah, I mean, I don't understand what that means. Like, you know, you're, you're joining a board so you can. Bet. I, I, I don't know why this is in there. Yeah, that's kind of. I mean, I, I would just like to just. If you're becoming a selectman to run for state rep, I mean. How about yeah. to engage in unselfish service for the community? Ah, there we go. Yeah, I mean. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I mean, unless you're going to define politically, I, I don't. Like, yeah, I don't think you have to go negative there. Yeah, I would Benefit. just take it out. Again, you know, we have uh, state ethics laws that we've talked about earlier. We right. Guide a lot of that. Everybody all right? So what, we're just taking it out. Uh, you know, read the role of the member is to engage in unselfish service to the community. Perfect. Okay. Next, uh, you had some comments here. Uh, oh, okay. So, for B13. Yeah. Um, I had a question mark there. I'm, um, I'm con so there's one, one, and two. Yes, yeah, so one, two. That, I realize that's just a bulleting thing, um, but yeah. I'm fine with the first one. Um, I yeah. don't. I'm a little concerned about what the second one means. Add after decision making or distribute information to the public. We all, in our engagements with the public, distribute information to the public. I mean, it's essentially asking us not to relay our knowledge. Where's make decisions? And I don't see where that gets inserted. Hope they get dropped here. <coughs> make decisions. Yeah, I don't see where that goes in. I'm not sure this belongs under decision making, but it's a good point. I also um, am concerned about two, members should not speak to press on issues of public safety. Um, while generally that's fine, um, and I think it's... Issues of security. I mean, we can talk about public safety, yeah. police, fire, that kind of thing. Like, so, for example, when the, when the schoolhouse was on, you know, fire, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spoke with one voice. It was the yeah. chief, right? And so... Um, you know, I think we wanted to, we wanted to on things like that. We wanted to defer, especially where people are concerned. We wanted to defer all comment to the appropriate staff person, whether that's chief of police, fire, oh. rule, town manager. That was where I was going with that. All right. Yeah. Sometimes they ask us to get the word out. Yeah. Um. I mean, my my comment here, as far as public safety goes, is if we're ever in a situation. 
God forbid, where something unfortunate were to happen. Mm -hmm. It may very well be the case where we as individual board members are not in agreement with certain actions. And I think this muzzles us as individuals. But also we have give the town manager the right to... Um, I agree, and I think in so, most cases that's... Mm -hmm. I think realistically most of us want to defer to the town right. manager to speak for the town. Um, All right, so are we making changes to verbiage of this decision making? And if so, what? Uh, I would rather... I, I mean, my suggestion is to keep it as written without the edits. Without B13. Well, I think it's... Uh, I, I really want to keep one in there. What do you have, Bob? Yeah, I think one... Well, yeah, here's I, the thing, though. I think one is already a law. Yeah, um, I don't yeah. think we, when you, we're only select board members oh. when we're sitting in meeting. That's the point. When we're in meeting. And so when we're not in meeting. You're an individual member. You're an individual yep. member if you say, I am speaking for the board. Unless there's a vote by the board. They Unless there's a vote. Right, right. right. Uh, yes, Bob. I think you can make this very clear whatever you decide in your communication section. Uh, Oh. That's oh, kind of where it's wandering. Yeah, that's, 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 I think yeah, that's a true. great point. Okay. But as, as Ray said, we don't want to highlight some laws and not others. And I, I'm pretty sure that there, this is a law. It is. I think you're right. I couldn't tell you which so one. Could be in right. a, I mean, it belongs more in onboarding. That, that's not on the agenda tonight, is it? Uh, no. 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 So All right, what's the pleasure of the board here? Decision making? I would leave as is. That's the consensus? Yeah. Um, for, okay. In regards to B13, I think B14 makes sense. Okay. Okay, so that verbiage should be added? Uh, Is it a new bullet or? If I assume it's top of the chat. Yeah, new bullet. New bullet, I think, is yeah. fine. It supports other things that have been changed earlier. Right. I agree. Okay. Yeah. You know, it makes perfect sense. All right, B15. Uh, does that one belong actually mean? in treatment of public staff, public staff, and other members? What we just agreed to. I mean, it's, it's, it's making? personnel policies. Yeah. Oh, I mean, why do we need this here? We we have no authority on any yeah. discipline related to staff. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no, no, no. nobody works for us but Bob and right. Sharon. Yep. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, this would this refer to. Um, <clears throat> All applicants who come before the board and, and, and all staff and consulting are entitled to be treated with respect despite differences of opinions. Um, mm -hmm. So if there was concerns about staff performance that communicated to the town manager, um, so what, th what this comment uh, deals with is that essentially it's the town manager that deals with any kind of staff discipline. I think that's a given, though. We don't yeah. have any authority to. But we're talking opine. about. You know, okay, we can code opine. Of conduct. We cannot act. We're talking about a code of conduct of a select board person. Yes. In this section. This in this applies section. to us. So, uh, well, that's why. It uh, should be actually, clarified. it's every member of the select board as well as every BC right. member. So this is to both. Right. Yeah, and actually, I think the difference is that we're now including select board. Yeah, people in the code. Yeah, we had to conduct. delineate that a little bit carefully right. because so some things clearly applied and some things didn't. From what was there for. So I don't know if this is a case that we should have separated better. I mean, it seems unnecessary to me. I, I don't have an objection to it in and of itself. Yeah, I just you know we're dealing with we're dealing with um, potential. We're talking B fifteen here. Is that are we wearing B fifteen yeah. there? Yes, because okay. I, I thought that's where we're at. Yeah. yeah. I, I just so just I mean the whole this whole section deals with a code of conduct, and and this particular thing deals with um, somebody who may have um, yeah. a concern about a particular staff member, and it's just you know should be made clear that. Um, 
that if, if that that we as a select board person are not going to weigh in on that. I, I think it I think it merits clarification. With Should the concerns about staff performance by a liaison actually be expressed to fellow board members? Is that appropriate, or should it just be? Wait, where are you? Uh, Boy. Well, um, wait, wait. member concerns, I'm assuming that means a member of a board? Yeah. Appointed board concerns about staff performance. Why would that not go only to the town manager? Yeah, why, why wouldn't you just delete the last sentence? I, I don't think bullet. the liaison should be involved. I agree. Okay. Uh, delete the second bullet entirely. Wait, wait, hold on. Um, Although... No, I mean, I think if... Wait, which one? I, I think there is something to be the said for first, public first bullet under government. treatment. I'm suggesting that the words or the select board liaisons to the BC outside of public meeting be struck, and it, that communication only happened to the oh, town yeah, manager. Okay. I would suggest that we ha say should be communicated to the town manager or a select board member. And this goes to my comment, which was F-16. Yeah, but, but select board members have no dominion over staff That was the whole point. That, that no, was but point. if... Oh. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. No, but if, um, if a resident and, and a volunteer member feels that they... For whatever reason, and again, I'm mm -hmm. long, long term, right? Not Bob, but that they don't feel like they can go to the town manager. They should have other oh. recourse, right? Because by coming to us or to one of us, mm -hmm. then that select board member could then speak to the town manager. And it's different coming from below. Are we talking about the public? Well, the pub? No, not the. Uh, no. no. Although it could be as well. Yeah. This is Who are we talking about? No, well, this, this is just is for BC to, members. To BC members. This, this section only does not apply to the public. No, and it, it, it deals with us. Us and BC members. Right. And, and oh all it says is that, and BC I think the intent of this was to give um, the BC member the choice of speaking with the town <laughs> manager or the select board liaison or liaisons to the town manager or to HR the, to the uh, Is that same same I don't, I don't I'm not comfortable that it could go to a member of the select board yeah I'm and not then worried. stop yeah I wouldn't know if yeah. the select board member doesn't choose to pass it along it could be a mandatory reporting issue that we're not right, required exactly. to do it could be a million things yeah. so I, I can understand someone not being comfortable coming to me yeah for whatever reason but I'm not sure I want to give them the right to not copy me if they go to you. Well, so, why I'm saying instead of coming to us, why not HR? Uh, well, either way, people right. within yeah. staff. Yeah, but, but I think they should be able to talk to the select board liaison. Why well, do we I need a policy that, to say that? The, 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 the issue is that. HR issue, um, sure. Can the, I recommend the select board member? The liaison then has to tell Bob. Okay. I recommend that we sure. delete that sentence. Okay, so what, what, what's the member concerns and just delete it because I, I I hear Bob's point of mm -hmm. what's a procedure right Can we just okay so just for a second yeah. and talk about what happens in the real world sure okay they're gonna talk to you but right. that's why I suggest okay yeah and if you start trying to legislate every single thing that's true I, agree. Yeah. I mean there's a right. thing here that yeah. says you know so we the are, judgment has to be right. that when somebody right. comes to you just get rid of that whole you've got to you know yeah, yeah but and it's just a person that works for Bob yeah you got to say Bob, Bob. Yeah. You, you know here's where we are yeah. policies yeah. are riverbanks right it means that, it means right. that anything so that you he's it, got it's it. not in there you Good. can't talk it it doesn't exist hey how about the second bullet under treatment what do we want to do there, any given materials. the comments? Which one? Well, any materials or information provided. That's an interesting question. By staff should be distributed to all members unless such just. Oh, um, so who had a comment on this? Who dared comment on this? Uh, F-17 or F-16? F it should be, well, be the same person. Yeah, right. Because yeah. they're both right here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, 16 we're done with. 16 we're done. Okay, 16 so 17. We're 17. Where I was going with this is that um, any information that is pertinent to a vote yeah. needs to be available to all members. Yeah. Okay. And it makes it seem here like there is the possibility that information could be 
some some members could be privy to information that others are not. No, no, no. In no. advance. No, no, no. Uh, so I, I just want to clarify it. Okay. Well, I don't you guys to wrote the, to this, the so statement as it's written. Yeah. Don't get defensive. No, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm, not, I'm not. It's just that it's brilliantly written. Let me understand. So you want to say any materials or information relevant provided by a member? Wait a minute. Provided to a board or commission member by staff. Isn't that kind no, of automatic? Wait, I got something before. Any materials or information that are relevant to a voter deliberation shall be made available to the entire board in advance of said vote or deliberation and to the public. It, it's taking parts of 17 and incorporating it. I'm fine with that. I'm not sure that the... Wait, so you're talking about private conversations? No, 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 no. Materials. That's That's materials, materials or, or, or information. Or information. Dan, well, Dan, could I just yeah. try to explain the sure. reasoning behind what I wrote here? Yep. I absolutely agree with Vanessa, and, mm -hmm. and I don't know if this was wording that was already in there, we adjusted or, or what, but that any materials or information provided to one B board or commission, committee member by staff has to be distributed to all of them. I, 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 except um, I wanted to make sure that in that distribution no deliberation takes place. That is, okay. no one provides uh, no, there's no opinion stuff in there. Yes. Right? Okay. So, what type of factual information? information. Like, so you can, you can, you can. I mean, staff can opine all they want. Yeah. It's just that we we cannot. Like um, if today I said I really think this should be included. Right. That would have been yeah. a no-no. But right. I said here, read this, talk yeah. about it tonight, don't deliberate. Exactly. Right. So I did any not materials or information provided to a board or committee member that could include us. Yeah, my staff should be distributed. We could have put a period after so, the BC members and say, um, uh, "This distribution or, or, or del deliberative uh, comments may not be." added a, to this distribution or something like that's that. That's a given considering all so, the meeting law. So if I ah, ask, good point. So if I ask Bob, good point. you know, let's say that we're doing the budget and I ask Bob, you know, um, I'm really interested in uh, this Ricasa stuff. Can I get a little more information on Ricasa? And he gives it to me. I got That means he has to give it to everybody? No, because that's not something we're deliberating. Right. I, I think that you're underestimating how much this will be. It means that any one of you that ask a question as board members, all of you no, have no. to get the information in the same material. Only if it's relevant to a deliberation. But most of what you're going to ask me is eventually deliberation. Mm -hmm. There's very few things that you're going to ask me just out of curiosity. So is this second bullet put in new, or is this was something that was... Um, I don't remember. Well, I mean, the, the, what, when would it not be distributed in the packet right. if it's germane to... The yeah, point? it could have happened months before a deliberation oh, is all okay. I'm saying. You could be discussing a topic for an extended period. Right. So if let's say I ask you the stuff on Rakasa, yeah, now yeah. three weeks later it's coming up. I think you have to give everything that he he would have just said if that's creating a lot like of economic work development. Yeah. You know, we may have discussed things for a right. long time, and right. then all of a sudden there's right. you know, an issue in front of the board. That's going to be hard to track. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I, I, I said this is a fair point. Bob. Strike. I, I said yeah. Get rid of yeah, the bullet. Get rid of okay. it. So the one one that starts any materials. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, the next comment, SB, this is under enforcement. <laughs> we talked about uh, reproaching. Oh, yeah, I remember. Give him the sword and take it to the back. <laughs> You're very bad. Yeah. It's in the yeah. Room. It's okay. We struggle yeah. with this. <laughs> we can't remove ourselves. So, okay. No. You can remove a board and committee member under extreme duress, but. Right. Only the voters can remove us, and there's there's a high bar to be met there. So, so are we talking on enforcement now? It's, yeah, it's, it's like a so B18. This, what is it? Censure, like a censure in Congress or something. So there's there's two comments here. As far as 18 goes, yeah. <coughs> you know, I I don't have strong feelings on this. or sort of pros and cons here, but. It puts the, the liaison in an awkward position of yeah. asserting authority over a member of a board where they are not supposed to be asserting authority. If yep. it's the chair, yeah. 
or if the chair is the liaison, then the vice chair. But someone sort of someone more neutral and third party <coughs> would be the one having the conversation, right? Because what if the reason that mm -hmm. the person is reproaching mm -hmm. them is because there's it's a personal conflict? Has nothing to do with the board or committee. Right? right. Then why would the liaison get involved? Right. It, if there's really if something rises to that level, I feel like it should be the chair. I, I would agree. Yeah. Okay. That all right? It's fine. Uh, so what you're doing is you t so you take the liaison out of that kind of yeah. a role in a board and a commission, right? Yeah. You, you may have nothing to do with the liaison. I mean, it's just yeah. maybe. So if a okay. select board member is in con so basically the select board member who and probably yeah in this case is the liaison. Nineteen right? is good. Yeah. Um, I like what you're saying. Yeah. No, no. I, th th this is just for if a select board member's conduct is inconsistent with this code of conduct, the chair of the board will discuss the conduct with the member. Oh, I Li that Liaisons wrong. don't um, come to play. Here. So wait. So, no, I'm so not why there's a liaison reference here in yeah, the comments? Very yeah, and, the, and that's in the comments. I, I think. Um, I think that might have been. A, a, I put think in the wrong place. Yeah. No, it was in the wrong place. I okay. think we can disregard B18. Yeah. 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 And I think B19, um, if the chair is the violator of the code of conduct, then sure, it falls to the vice chair. It would have to fall. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> well, this is a wording. The vice chair uh, takes on any duties if, right. if the yeah. chair is unable to perform them. That so the vice happen. chair will perform the scolding? <laughs> Yes. Exactly. Yeah, and then the, the whole thing. What are, what are we even talking about? What's the reproach? Yeah, what's the reproach is addressed in removal. such a way as to express approval or disappointment. Well, is I, that done publicly or privately? Uh, did you say about bringing the stocks back up front? <laughs> do we have stocks a, on the common? Do, hey. do we have a Senate Rule 25? No, but uh, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, in in the interest of I'm time, we we you know, Dan and I talked about this, and we felt that That's it was important. Point that um, if these code of conduct rules apply to others and there was a consequence, yep. there yeah. also had to be a consequence for the board members. Right. And the best we could do is a reproach. And that's, it's a statement of uh, disapproval. Right. And that's, by the that's, board. that is okay. done by the board. Fine. But, but you can say what it means, but what, what yeah, I mean, uh, it, So that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next. Fine with that. Right. Uh, but, Next but, but it means but nothing. I'm actually. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> well, I have no more. No, I mean, no, I don't mean it means nothing. It's symbolic. It I mean, nothing. it's, it's, it's symbolic. symbolic. Yeah. Right. But it's, that's all we can do. Yeah. So. Correct. Right. Okay. I have no more comments. We're on the home stretch. Uh, page 2 5 under. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? This is under section 2 3, page 2 5. There were a couple of comments. Yeah, I suggested you right. delete number 2. Delete 2. Anybody have a problem with that? In terms of regulations. It, it may be almost repetitious. <laughs> It's all well in the charter, isn't it? Should we be? I, don't, I think we can assign any number of years we want. This just puts some structure around that. But he's saying it's too rigid. Maybe you don't want to. Yeah, that's all he meant. Is yeah. Defined. Yeah. One's enough. <laughs> all right. So should we uh, delete that? Yes. Sure. Two. Okay. Yeah. And what do you say on three? Charter does not appear. Confirmed. Yeah. Uh, I would say in add in, in number three in accordance with the Reading Home Rule Charter Section 415 and Bylaw Section 3316. That's the section. That this deals. is coming out of Ray's office. Yeah. Yeah. Say it again, Dan. And Bylaw Section 3316. I verified that today. That's the section that 3.3.1.6. Okay. That's on. Uh, Associate members. And there needs to be a space. <laughs> we number three, right? Select board. Uh, uh, select board. And there well, needs to be a here's space. Here's what I'm going to suggest. Before uh, May. We're gonna, you guys should take a preliminary vote tonight. Take a second vote on the cleaned up copy. There may still be some stuff to neaten up here. We're going to get some things wrong tonight. So okay. your notes. Not a single thing is going to be wrong, Dan. That's all going to be correct. correct. It's, it's not going to be your problem. <laughs> okay, I got it. Right. It will be correct. Caitlin may be watching this meeting several times. No, they've all fallen asleep, I guarantee you. <laughs> yes, you can put it down. Okay, okay we have completed. Pretty well. I now can ask the question, is there any public input? <laughs> Hearing nothing. Uh, yeah. Is there a motion to close the hearing? Uh, sure, that gives you a chance. Okay. 
Uh, move that the board close the hearing, amending select board policies, Article 1, operating procedures, and Article 2, boards, committees, commissions. Second, uh, all in favor? All right, now I'm going to. Uh, I have a motion if you want me to read it, you, unless you, you want to. You can go ahead and make it, okay. because I've lost mine. Move the board approve the amendment to select yeah. board policies, Article 1, operating procedures, and Article 2, boards, committees, and commissions as amended. Okay, so let's go through it from the top and make sure we've captured things. All right, starting with 111. Um, yep. I have that we are going to incorporate uh, comment RL9. Wait a minute, no, yes. the wrong one, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, so I start, so I just, it's my kids. <laughs> RL5. Put that in place of the first paragraph. Uh, you got that? The select board shall schedule a meeting yes. after the town election prior to the opening of the annual town meeting. During this meeting, the board shall reorganize. Oh God, we have to do it again. Select <laughs> officers if you really need it. We're just, we're just we're confirming just, so we can right. vote. This is yep. all what we already Nominate did. under in place of a sign on three, because uh, I've got stuff on two pages here. We're going to yep. miss things. Uh, we're going to delete item six and renumber seven six. Uh, right. You're deleting four and six. Four and six, and right. what are we doing in place of four? All right, you got that. Yeah. Okay. All right, page two. Or page, uh, yeah, one dash two. <coughs> um, and the liaisons, deleting number one. Did we want to. S yes, that was unnecessary. Yeah. Okay, which one we have? Uh, 115. Yep. Mind me if you're number yep. one. Strike one. Strike right. one. Okay. Two more and you're out. Okay. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, inform uh, the agenda shall add some edits. Yep. As soon as practical. Under number two. Where are we now? Um, one dash three. Wait a minute, you're way, way ahead. I'm still oh. back under 115. I, I thought we were done. Uh, mm -hmm. Because we, we did have something under 115, number four. All correspondence from a liaison to a department head will copy oh, okay. the town manager. So that should be in there. That's right. And we also, on B13, yep. we added number six under no, this, this yeah. is bears. Under no circumstances will a member acting in a liaison role direct manage or and I, I had a note that may be unnecessary. Did we decide to leave that in? We did. Okay. Okay. Let's go. All right, now we'll go forward. Office hours are going to leave alone. Yep. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, agenda shall be approved by the chair in consultation with the town manager. Yep. We have that. Uh, contain any discussion? What did we decide to do here? The chair reserves the right to schedule the agenda item at a future select board meeting. Did we agree just that was it? Hmm? Yeah, just left, it, left it alone. Okay. I fine. thought we we no, we, we were going to add um, in due course. In, in due not, time. Well, number two in, was changed to as soon as practical. As not soon as practical. practical. Yes. Okay. Good. And then three. Did we make that change that I was talking about? Uh, we publish. Um, Oh, no, we said no, if you said that was okay. The earliest possible is fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, under the agenda contents, we added uh, reports and comments under mm -hmm. select board liaison reports. So it's yep. reports and comments. Yep. Okay. That's all I have on one, three. Yep. One, four, nothing. We, we were not going to add comments about the refraining from camp. No. Okay. No. <coughs> And um, quorum, we're going to. Uh, what are we doing with rule one? Uh, crossing out section 3.2 of. Mm -hmm. Just say, is yeah. defined oh. in the home. Okay, fine. Okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, um, what else did we change here? I don't think we changed I don't think we changed anything. anything. Okay, good. The rest of this page. Yep, good. Okay, one page, one five. Um, and then I think Vanessa's comment was F24 withdrawn is a, yep, because with, withdraw. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, yep. At, at rule 10, we were leaving alone. Yep. Yep. Dan, is it okay if I, 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 you know, give your voice a rest? Yeah. For a minute. Um, 
rule 11. Um, I'm so sorry. One change, uh, change the audience to public in five. In, in the hearings. Yep. yep. Okay. Um, and that the rest of the hearings were fine. Yep. Um, and then, um, and then the adding in, Bob, you were going to add in this for general bylaw, the select board shall at annual meeting, give members, uh, uh, town meeting members, the state of the town, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, this thing, 1.2.9. That became 1.2.9. 129 or 138? No, wait a minute. I have 138 because remember that's yeah, the one you board. just talked about. 129 is nominating board that's members the for on. liaison. Ah, yeah. uh, I'm sorry. Yep. Right, you're right. Yeah. And and this is 138. Uh, well, not there yet. Um, well, right, I was just going. Common RL 29. They will be 138 yeah. when you get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just make a note, that's where it's from. Uh, okay. What do we do on 133? Three? We, we already did 133. Uh, three. 134. They approve. Uh, yep, they approve. Yep. I don't have anything then else uh, three, yeah. down through communication. Sorry, 134, the select board may approve. May approve. Right may approve. Okay. Yep. Skip 134, go to 15. So we're 151. Yep. Yeah, bullet point one strike on April 30th. Yep. Correct. Now, you're just striking April 30th. We're just saying one term should expire each year. Yep. yep. Okay, that's fine. Um, I didn't have anything else. So you were oh, for that, but under are we on 152 now? Um, so we're going to accept five and six as rewritten. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I said. I had something under one five, five, one, five two. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we already did that. Okay, fine. So five and six has rewritten. Yep. Uh -huh. um, uh, eight is okay. Is uh, meant as a raised comment, sir. Yep. yep. And it, and it. I think we were going to say. Uh, yeah. Uh, Barry's comment. I chopped up the sentence a bit. Ah, uh, yes. Right. Okay. Yeah. As amended by the town manager. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, 168 was added. We, we're not touching 16 other than what we already voted tonight. 168, new yep. section. Please remind me what 168 is. That was the procurement. The oh, right. Yeah, that's, right, what right. Yep. So the, yeah. that's what we did yesterday. Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, I think that completes one. So, yep. uh, so it was the motion for both? Yes. Okay. It was. Yep. All right, so let's go through two. I think we're doing two motions, so that's fine. So uh, under remote participation, I have strike item three, additional regulations. Correct. Uh, and then and under full strike, the phrase only audio remote participation is allowed. Were there any other changes to that? No, um, that was no. it. Okay, and then under nine, all handouts and or presentations add the phrase that are considered public records must be made available. Yep. Great. Okay, is that sufficient yep. on that one? And we are moving um, annual town report rule and regulations yeah. up above that. Yeah. Right, and rule, yep, exactly. Uh, okay. And then um, under Code of Conduct 2 2, responsibilities, last bullet. The role of a member is to engage in unselfish service to the community. Period. Yes. Um, all right. Uh, decision making, leave wording on first bullet. Okay. It's, it satisfies B13, and, and there should be a new bullet with the content of B14. Yes. Can you um, go back to B13 again? Yeah. Jim? Was there any of that we kept in or not? I didn't have Members should take. You may, okay, I, I, I just wrote leave wording. I the reason the, to leave it is because um, it's already a law that you can't speak for the board outside of right. the board meeting. Right. Okay. Um, and then, wait, I thought we agreed to leave that in. Which number? B13. Oh, that piece? The yeah. first? The first yeah, one. we were going to accept that, you know, um, there's a lot of things, okay. that, that a lot okay of things in it. law that we put in here. Yeah. Just, I, I just, 
this is more of an exclamation point than it is anything else. But what would you want that to be? That could be the last sentence in the first bullet. Uh, oh, wait a minute, that doesn't. I thought uh, we were going to put that into an onboarding manual because of the okay. if we highlight. Yeah. Where I think Ray's point was if that we specifically call out, you can't do this because the law says so. Yeah, that's um, I agree. It makes more sense in an onboarding policy. Okay, so is that all right? That's yeah, fine. All right, My good. question is, who's going to compile the onboarding? I'm so making notes. Onboarding. <laughs> Dan, that's not just very funny, Dan. Very funny. Maybe you never know who might help you. A consulting contract. You know, we'll pay you what you, your hourly rate that you made here. Um, <laughs> Actually, we'll double it. Yeah. Censored. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Treatment of public staff and other members. We did a lot of cutting out here. I think we took off the second sentence, member concerns. Yes. And then we took off the second bullet completely. Uh, yes. Yes. And that is all I have for that page. Yep. 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 Ooh. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> page two dash five, the penultimate page here. Yeah, what was my penultimate meeting? This is not my ultimate. Wait, meeting. what page are we on? Page two dash five, I, I think. Yeah, uh, you've already served one day longer than you <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. almost. Yeah. Uh, item two is gone. Yep, yep. Item three, we're adding uh, after section four one five of the home rule charter and bylaw section three three yep. one six. Yep. yep, is there anything else? Oh. Anything at all? Oh, there's a little Stop formatting. asking or someone's going to Okay, so, so uh, I'm, I'm going to call the vote. Okay, so yep. are, are, yes. are, are we, did we decide it? Because it sounded like we talked around it, but we we'll decide so that when we do liaison assignments, the chair does not nominate. Is that what we decided? I think so. Yep. We is, that, is that the will of the board? He will compile a, a composite list, and the board as a whole will is, decide. Discuss is, it. Is that the will of the board? Okay, then I'm done. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Is there uh, any further discussion? Um, are we, yeah. your recommendation, Dan, is that we approve this and then sort of do a housekeeping? Yeah, I think you should look at it one more time just to make sure everything's right. Because okay. we're going to miss I just don't want to have, have um, do this again. Do, I don't want to do this, this again. We'll hand it out. Okay. And then that can be further discussion. But okay. So this doesn't end it if you we close the public here. Yeah. So. You have the right, they have the right to amend it. As long as they do, then. Um, I, I, can I propose that we. Is it ministerial changes? That's why they have two, you know, two readings of uh, bills and that kind of thing. Right. Right. I, I, I just, um, I'd like some closure on this this evening. It's yeah. the end of, end of, end of, end an of era. this board. An error, um, did you say? And I think that <laughs> Bob is capable of, of, um, of carrying this out as we described we were pretty specific yeah okay. all right i mean uh, yeah I, i'll 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 look. vote it but i yeah i want the you want to see it i want yeah, oh, I, want yeah the, I want the opportunity to clean it up i agree okay nothing is prohibitive okay. of that correct no I, okay you don't right. have to redo reconsideration say we at least got something done <laughs> right. but if we if we open it up to the uh, opportunity to clean it up. What does that clean opens it up, up mean? the whole? Yeah, what just to make mean? sure the changes made, were made faithful to what we talked about. Oh sure. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. agreed on certain things. If it doesn't come out exactly that way, then yeah. they get it's going to get what? fixed. These yes. policies are open to re looking at any time. Yeah, you don't want to notice. I don't want, I don't want this to be the goal. We're, we're of the in board. agreement. Let's call yeah. the vote. All right. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor. Okay. Nice job. Good, good Thank job, you, Andy. Dan. Good job, Dan. Yeah. You worked me to the very end. Good. Would you like to do the final motion to adjourn? I think you should go back to the minutes and approve that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is definitely your, past 11 o'clock. Bob, move do you have the, a contract? <laughs> move that the select board stand adjourn, signee die. <laughs> <laughs> Second? Second. All right. All in favor? All right. All right. Fade to black. Out of, out of session. Thank, Thank you. you.